Well, thank God, and, and we praise God, and we give him glory for allowing us a, another opportunity to come on this Wednesday evening, the last Wednesday evening in the year of 2020. <laughs> Truly, God has been good to us and blessed us, and we praise him. And we thank God for you who are joining with us this evening in our weekly Bible study. I'm joined by Elder Reginald Moulton, Missionary Regina White, Missionary Barbara Tucker on this evening. And we thank God for you just uh, coming in and sharing with the word as we go forth in magnifying God through his word and studying his word that we may know him in his glory and in his wonders. And so we thank God for you. We're in the uh, 12th chapter of the book of Acts, a powerful book because it lets us know what Christ expects his church to be about. And that is about winning souls for the kingdom of God. So Amen. we praise God for you joining in with us. We're going to pray. Then we'll read just a few a section from our book. And then Elamote will just pick up and take us forth in this chapter. Father, we just love you and thank you just for the opportunity that you've given us as we come to just glean from your word. Forever, oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven and let it be settled in our hearts and minds tonight. Oh God, as we go forth in your word and as we have studied your word and meditated on it and as we speak your word tonight, be with us, oh God, in everything that we say and do. Let your name be glorified and let those that hear be blessed. Let them be strengthened. Let their faith increase by your word in the name of Jesus. And Father, we'll praise you and give you thanks. In your precious son, Jesus name, we pray. Thank God. Amen. Uh, now, in this 12th chapter, the 12th chapter shows us the pers that the persecution of the believer was still widespread. The wicked and proud King Herod began to vex the church and kill the Apostle James in his attack. James was one of the three men who formed the inner circle of disciples who were very close to the Lord Jesus during his three year ministry upon the earth. So we're in this 12th chapter and I'm going to ask Elamotin if he would just pick up reading in here and then we'll go forth in discussion on tonight. And again, we want to say to you, if you have any questions, any comments, please let us know. Uh, they'll be able to get it to us on tonight. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. In the 12th chapter, now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and the light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel. But thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leaded unto the city, which opened, it, opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And Peter was, and when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord had sent this angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod, 
and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where they were many, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, it is his angel. But Peter, but Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he beckoning unto them with his hand to hold their peace, declared unto him who the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Now, as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers what was become of Peter. And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. <laughs> I'm sorry. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea in their abode. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him, and having made blasters, the king's chamberlain, their friend, desired peace, because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon the day, and upon the set day, Herod arrayed in raw apparel, set up on his throne, and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God, and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. But the word of God grew and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Amen. Just before you begin, uh, thank God missionary uh, Linda Ford has joined us. And we're in this 12th chapter. Go right ahead. Yes, sir. Well, we see, like you said, the, um, the persecution of the church was still widespread. And that's why we have to um, pray. You know, we always hear where people say, Be before you go out, you should pray. You should gather together and pray because we don't know when it, it, when this can happen. We, we don't know when the persecution can come in our direction. And I've, I've heard... Some of you all say that somebody snatched the Bible out your hand. You know, somebody tore the Bible in two and said, I didn't want to hear this. So things happen when, when the enemy is trying to stop the, the work of God. But he stretched forth his hand to vex the church, but he can't stop the church. That's so right. the, the devil is always trying to um, tell us, you know, to look at what would happen to someone else. And this can happen to you also. But we don't have to be afraid because God has not given us the spirit of fear. Right. But and He's going to teach us those things also because sometimes you, you can wonder, you know, I should I go over here? But if the Lord is with you, He's going to keep you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, He kept Jesus from Herod when, um, uh, when with Joseph, He gave Joseph a plan on what to do. So the Lord will keep us in the center of His will. And he'll keep us from the enemy, but we shouldn't be so surprised that when the enemy try to rise his head to stop um, certain things from happening in the church by trying to persecute you or either try to ridicule you and call you like some people say everything but a child of God and say what you're saying is not true. But they kept going in spite of all the things that happened and was happening right in front of their face. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I see here also in chapter 11, verses, um, verse 26, it says, you know, I'll go to verse 25. 
Barnabas, you know, he went to seek out Saul in verse 26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves in the church and taught much people. And the disciple was called Christian first in Antioch. And as Elder Moulton was saying, we see the the um, the church is growing and Gentiles are getting saved. And they're not just getting saved, but they being taught. When you get saved, you need you have to be taught. And so we see here, um, as they were as the church was being uh, formed and persecution. I, you know, when Stephen when Stephen was murdered, and then they scattered. They scattered, but they still stayed among the Jewish Jewish race. Mm -hmm. But God wanted them to scatter among the Gentile. So we see here in verse twelve, we see the king Herod. This Herod Agrippa, and that name is just a family name. And we see how, you know, he's not really liked about it. He was a favorite of the Jewish, but he was trying to get favor. Mm -hmm. So he began to uh, stretch forth his hand to vex certain churches, you know, go against the saints. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, he, see that he, seen that it, he saw that it pleased the Jewish um those that are against the Christian, so he goes and have uh, kill James. So we see, you know, not only just um, persecution, but they their lives was being lost. Hmm. But that still didn't stop them because the word of God was going to be spread. So in verse two, he kills James, who was the brother of John, with the sword. And so he saw that that pleased the 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 Jewish. And so um, he began to, you know, persecute the church and take mm. Peter. So we see much persecution is going on. So they take he takes Peter and put have him in jail. But that still didn't stop anything because mm. even though J uh, Peter was put in jail, what was the saints doing? They were praying. And it's so yeah. important that we keep praying. We don't stop praying. You know, when persecution comes, we just keep on praying, keep on hmm. seeking the Lord, you know, and keep on trusting the Lord. So Amen. even though it's much persecution, he kills James with the sword. He locks up Peter. They they continue to pray. They continue to pray. They continue mm -hmm. to pray. And as we keep reading along, even though they praying and they seeking God, but when they saw Peter, they really, you know, they were so shocked that he was out. They didn't even believe him, but persecution can stop Jesus' work. It That's cannot true. stop Jesus' Amen. work. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Amen, Pastor. I was looking Go at uh, when Peter came to the door and knocked. Uh, Rhoda came uh, to the door and she was shocked, as Mother was saying. And it just reminded me of us today, how we pray and we believe God and we stand in faith that God will do it. And then when he does it, we don't believe it. Mm -hmm. you know, and the Lord is trying to help us understand that he is real. Yes. If we pray in faith, he does answer. And this was just, you know, an illustration of how uh, the Holy Spirit was moving all through the situation. Mm -hmm. And when he came to the door, they were they shouldn't have been astonished, but that's human nature. That's, that's mm -hmm. what we do, you know, but um, God was just showing everybody. He was showing Peter that he was true and, and bringing him out with the angel and passing through the street, pass through the gate, pass mm -hmm. through all of that. And normally you would have been seen if you were trying to escape, mm -hmm. but the angel was there to make him just be invisible pretty much, and get through all of that. And when he came to the end of it and woke up, he said, wow, now I, I see that mm -hmm. God did send his angel. And uh, sometimes when the Lord blesses us and gives us something great, you know, it's kind of like we can't just can't believe it. And, mm -hmm. and that's just human nature. That's what we do. But the more these things happen, uh, the more we can trust the Lord. And Israel, like you said earlier, Pastor, when we were talking, Israel just kept messing up. Every time God would give them a miracle, uh, within minutes, they forgot about it. Mm -hmm. And they needed another miracle and another proof. But uh, And the Lord is merciful to still give it to us. So um, that was just really um, impressive to me how 
the angel worked with him through all of that, got him out, but then how, you know, in our human nature, when God brings a miracle, sometimes it's hard to believe, but it's still God. That's true. Mm -hmm. Man. That's true. Anyone else? One thing, you know, is uh, the church is being persecuted, but the church is growing. Yeah. You know, uh, when you look at that down in the uh, 24th verse, it says there, but the word of God grew and multiplied. Mm -hmm. So now through all of this, through uh, uh, James being murdered and becoming the first apostle to be uh, to die for the gospel martyr. sake, mm -hmm. the murder martyr for the gospel sake, and then Peter being jailed, you know, and Herod basically, you know, it was a political move that Herod did mm -hmm. because he wanted the favor of everybody else. So he figured, you know, since th there's an uproar against these people, mm -hmm. these Christians as they, you know, called them. Mm -hmm. You know, I can I can get everybody on my side if I go against them. Mm -hmm. You know, if I if I you know if I'm seen as one that is going to destroy them or go against them, and you know that's the same spirit that his grandfather had, Herod the Great, mm -hmm. who wanted to destroy Jesus. And right. what does he do? He goes. He he has uh, James killed, but then he goes to get Peter. He he figures well. Then since I got James, I can get mm -hmm. this fella too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that also shows us, you know, God has his time for us. Mm -hmm. He allowed James to mm -hmm. be martyred, but he allowed Peter to live. Mm -hmm. Because it's, a, uh, it's according to God's will. Mm -hmm. All we're to do is just serve him and obey him. You know, and right. so Peter is jailed. And, you know, basically when you read it, He's more or less in a deep sleep when the angel wakes mm -hmm. him up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that also lets him know he wasn't worried. He wasn't mm -hmm. down there afraid and, mm -hmm. and bewildered because he's in the, the, the angel has to shake him to wake him up mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, you know, opens mm -hmm. up everything and gets him out because they had him in the deep area of, of jail. Mm -hmm. the you know, they, didn't want him, they, they had him in the dungeon area mm -hmm. and right. he gets him out and, you know, opens up the gate tells him to go and when he comes out he comes to himself he's thinking this is a, a vision and god has delivered him mm -hmm. you know so god moves according to the counsel of his own will mm -hmm. and he will work in us because what we're to be used by him mm -hmm. and then you know he goes that the saints are praying you know mm -hmm. the saints are praying right. yeah you know and and we know we got to pray in faith mm -hmm. You have to pray in faith, believing, mm -hmm. but they were yet praying. Mm -hmm. You know, because Jesus said, "Men ought to always pray and not faith." I faith, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and so, but, and then when we come to the end of this chapter, Herod, who had gone to come against God's church, God comes against him. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. See, you know, people can think that they're going to destroy God's church, but mm -hmm. upon this, Jesus said, "Upon this rock, I will build my yeah. church." The Amen. church belongs to Jesus. Amen. Amen. He purchased it with his own blood. And nobody will be able to destroy God's church. And Amen. Herod, you know, he had had uh, James killed, but now God deals with him uh -huh. in his pride and arrogance. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so, you know, a person, uh, people can feel like, and, and the church, you know, we may not be going through martyrdom like uh they were in this particular chapter but things are happening against the church of the lord jesus christ mm -hmm. right? because mm -hmm. men love darkness rather than light you know right. that, that we're, we're in a time where if you're going to stand for the lord you're going to be in opposition to what's going on in our culture mm -hmm. right. that's the bottom line you cannot compromise with the ungodliness of this culture and and feel as though god's going to bless you they they stood for jesus mm -hmm. and because they stood for jesus the enemy comes against them to destroy them mm -hmm. but what it does is brings greater motivation to the believers and the bible says the word is going forth and multiplying mm -hmm. 
So, you know, when when a, uh, when uh, the enemy comes to try and destroy the work of the Lord, God raises up a standard against him. Mm -hmm. And that ought to encourage us to stay with God, that we don't have to compromise. We don't have to feel as though we got to go along to get along. Mm -hmm. We got we got to stand for, for the word of God, stand for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, there's only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus. Amen. That's the bottom line. There's yeah. no other. There's no other way given unto men other than through for salvation, other than through Jesus Christ. And right. as we see the day approaching and see the culture that we're in, we see a culture that says if you make that stand or if you have that feeling, something's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, something's wrong with you. You're not. Uh, going along with you, you know, there's something uh, 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 animosity that you have, and all of that. No, mm -hmm. it's what God says. Let every man be a liar. God's word is true. Mm -hmm. And we see here, because they stood for Jesus, persecution comes against them. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, notice, Peter goes to jail here. Mm -hmm. He goes in prison. The Lord didn't deliver him from it. He delivered him in it. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's some things he, he he'll deliver us from, but he's going some things he's going to deliver us in the middle yeah. of. It. Mm -hmm. That's true. You know, we and we don't know how God's going to work, how He wants to work. work. So right. you know, we have to as believers. I I believe in my spirit as believers. We have to see what God did for the early church and say they stood for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can stand for Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they the enemy came against them and the enemy, all that live godly must suffer persecution. That's what you're trying to say. Mm -hmm. That's true. You know, somebody's not going to like you because because you love Jesus. That's mm -hmm. true. Right. Amen. You know, somebody's going to feel as though that you you got an issue or problem or, you mm -hmm. know, you, you're not culturally acceptable because you're standing for G and for, to stand for Jesus means I stand for his word. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. so, so how can two walk together except they be agreed? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. If they were agreeing with the 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 Judaizers or or the the Jews who who believed in the law and the Sadducees and all of them, if they were agreeing with Herod and all of them, they wouldn't have came against them. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But because they stood for the name that's above every name. Mm -hmm. When we stand for Jesus, it is automatically in opposition to the world. Yeah. That's true. That's true. And what and I believe what is what is God has what has been happening is, you know, sometimes the organization of the church has been compromising with the world. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So let's come out of come out from mm -hmm. among them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that means we're we're not uh, showing animosity or trying to be better than any or holier than thou, you know, some people say, well, you're trying to be holier than thou or, and all of that. No, I, I believe the word of God. Yeah. And because I believe the God, I'm, the word of God, I'm going to stand on mm -hmm. what God's word says. And there's, you a know, and yeah. there, there's a difference. So, mm -hmm. you know, they, they're standing for G and, and, yeah. and, and James is, is killed for it. Mm -hmm. Just right. like John the Baptist. John the yeah. Baptist stood and told uh, Herod then, the, the son, it's, told it's, him, it's wrong, wrong for you. To have, to have your brother's own wife. He told him that. He told him it's mm -hmm. wrong for you to have your brother's wife. Yes, he yes. didn't compromise and say, well, you know, mm -hmm. I understand how women are right. mm -hmm. and all of this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're all human. Or we're men and mm -hmm. all of this. So he didn't. He said mm -hmm. it's wrong. And mm -hmm. because he said that, it stirred it up. And the enemy mm -hmm. came against him. Mm -hmm. And noted, he, he was beheaded for it. Yes, mm -hmm. he does. Which means that as a believer, some may have to go through. We, you know, uh, uh, and, and I'm gonna let you all come come in. Mm -hmm. But when we read in uh, Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and we see the faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the end of that, you see where folks went through. Folks died for it because mm -hmm. of what they believed in. Mm -hmm. They went through, and the believer today has to come to that understanding that as we see the day approaching, uh, the the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word of God is standing against the world. And if we're in Christ, we got to stand against the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Go right ahead. So yeah, that, yeah. that's so true, Pastor, because I was thinking, you know, in order for the church to grow, um, it's necessary that we, the believers, or we, the disciples, or we, the Christians, whatever you want to uh, call yourself, uh, followers of Christ, we must preach and we must teach about God. And yes, opposition is going to come against you and people are going to, even if sometimes they're going to bring up accusations that are not true against you, just to try to stop your influence of teaching about Jesus Christ. But that That's still true. is not to hinder us. We to know that if Christ before us, he is more than the world, the oh. whole world against us. So we have to continue to preach and teach holiness. The Lord told us to come out from among them and be separate. We have to be separate. We have to, you know, I know we want to be a part and we want to do this and we want to do that. But we have to be um, transformed. We have to come out from among them. And in order to come out from among them, we can't talk like them. We can't act like them. We can't live like them. We That's must true. show a difference in order for us to, you know, um, invite them to Christ. You know, how yeah. are we going to invite mm-hmm. them to Christ if we're out there? They can't tell the difference. Yeah. And uh, like you forestated, I believe our churches are in great error of this and allowing too many things to go on mm-hmm. and accepting too many things of this world instead of making a stand. But we have to be, we are, whether we believe it or not, we are forerunners of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. We are to let this dying world know that Jesus is on his way back and that mm-hmm. is now is the acceptable time. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. I, go ahead. I was also thinking pastor too, um, James, you know, God allowed him to, you know, to be murdered, Mm -hmm. but then he still was on the winning side because, you know, he was standing for Christ. So he lost his life for Christ. Mm -hmm. So we don't understand how God works. We don't have to understand all of how he works, but we just have to believe and Mm -hmm. follow and obey. But then with Peter, so I'm looking at both men, you know, both, you Mm -hmm. know, James and Peter. James was delivered because he lost his life, but he won his life too. Mm-hmm. So Peter was he was in the fire, but Jesus delivered him out of the fire and he didn't, you know, he delivered him and he didn't lose his life. So God was protecting both of them. You know, True. God was in the God was in the midst and he was in the work of both of them. So he Amen. was, you know, and so we sometimes, you know, we might have to lose our life. You know, mm-hmm. as human beings, you know, we like to uh, be popular. We like to be light mm-hmm. and we like to be in the inner crowd, as we say. But mm-hmm. sometimes when you make a stand, everybody might not like you. You might That's not true. be so popular, mm-hmm. but making a stand. So we see in the early days of the um, forming the church and we see how the apostles and those that uh missionaries that was on the missionary field how they stood for christ they didn't mm-hmm. take down they didn't they didn't compromise and we living in a day and a time now we compromise mm-hmm. and that, that's where we see the power of the church is failing because mm-hmm. we're prompt we're uh compromising and not only that we're bringing in some of the worldly stuff too. And That's even true. me, from the time I got saved until now, I see a change in the church. Mm-hmm. I see a great change in the church. True. You know, so um, we see the men of God. They were standing perse- through persecution. They were standing. They did not take down. They mm-hmm. cared nothing about their life. They That's were focused true. on one thing, and that was Jesus Christ. So, yeah. you know, as the saints of God, I think, uh, you know, especially at this time of the COVID-19, mm-hmm. that uh, we began to uh, draw closer to the Lord True. and finding out that something that we thought was so important is not so important, Amen. but the Lord. So I, I was looking mm-hmm. at the two of them. You know, he, God was with the both of them. They yes. must lost their life and the morning, you know, um, God spared and delivered Peter out of jail. Mm-hmm. Anyone else? Um, yes, sir. If I can just say, uh, I've been I've been you know, looking at this like every week. We've been having this this um, great discussion, 
And um, when Jesus was with them and when he rose from the dead, they say that the disciples was um, shut up for the fear, fear of the Jews. But Jesus came and gave them comfort and told them peace, um, peace be upon them. So he's been with them. And some of the things that have happened to us from our testimonies, you know, that's enough to keep us going strong in the Lord. I, 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 I can easily think that if it had not been for the Lord, that the things that I have gone through in, in many different circumstances, some I haven't testified about, that it, it would have taken me over. But because the Lord had mercy upon me and I was able to call upon him, it showed me that the life that I was living was, you know, um, it, it, had, it was an escape for me because mm -hmm. I, first I wasn't saved. I wasn't at one time I wasn't saved at all. Mm -hmm. I was doing all kinds of stuff. And, mm -hmm. and in some kind of way I got by then. But then after I got saved, there was still some mistakes that I made, but it was because that I fell upon the mercy of the Lord in mountain circumstances that the Lord delivered me. And I, and I see how the Lord has delivered them. They, they was in the upper room. They was up in, in the room and Jesus came and he breathed upon them. Then um, over way, way back in other chapters, they had told them, they said, did, did not we strictly charge you not to preach or teach in this man's name? Mm -hmm. intending to bring this man blood upon us, even though that was an excuse. But they say, now you have filled all of Jerusalem with this man's doctrine. Mm. So, but we still see here in the 12th chapter, disciples are still going mm -hmm. and the Lord is working through them the will and do of his good pleasure. So I would say that we don't know who we are touching. True. But if we keep on living, we might be surprised the amount of people. Now, I'm, and I'm really kind of looking at the Jews here, how long they're going to continue in the faith that they in without really coming to the Lord, having the days of unleavened bread, having doing things that that was kind of like transforming them, and then they still going back to that and killing the Lord's disciples at the same time. I mean, this mm -hmm. was a great death right here. They, I mean, they beheaded this man mm -hmm. to try to send a strong message mm -hmm. that if you continue in this, this is going to happen to you also. Mm -hmm. But the Lord was with them. And I'll say that I hear some people at work. I hear someone today talking about the Lord and about the Lord's um, birth. Now, these are things that I'm telling you that people normally didn't do. So I think, mm -hmm. you know, you can have an effect. You can have an open effect and you can have a silent effect. All we True. need to do is just keep on living for the Lord because we are touching somebody. And your testimony is speaking volumes to somebody's heart. And these mm -hmm. disciples were ruffling the feathers of a lot of people. And the devil came in and tried to stop it. But he found out that he couldn't stop, you know, God's church. Um, even from the top, mm -hmm. King Herod, he couldn't mm -hmm. stop it. True. So therefore, God is in control. If we keep living for him, he assures the, that he will bring us through even mountain circumstances. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Well, and one thing when we see that the Lord delivers Peter, he comes to the house and the young lady Rhoda is excited, goes back and says he's there. You know, we see where there's a growth in that, you know, they have to develop in faith. Mm -hmm. You know, when we pray, we have to believe what we're praying for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and that 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 speaks to us today. We have to believe whatever we're petitioning God, we have to believe it and know that it's going to be at the door, you know? So when we look at them, we must also look at ourselves and say, all right, what am I praying and believing? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not just only looking at them and saying, see, they didn't believe it, but then, they, you know, we, the Bible says, let a man examine himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we look at ourselves and say, Lord, am I believing you? Am I trusting mm -hmm. you? That you, you know, because we can see situations and it look like it's never going to change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, from visibly, you know, looking at it, mm -hmm. it looks like it's not going to change, but we don't know what God is doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, they were praying. They didn't know God was dispatching an angel yeah, that's to get right. him out. Mm -hmm. They were just praying that God praying. would deliver. Mm -hmm. That's right. And while they're praying, God is moving. And so that helps and encourages us. I can just speak for myself. Mm -hmm. It encourages me to know. 
to say, you know what, God, just I'm just gonna keep praying. Mm -hmm. I don't know how deliverance Amen. is coming. Yes. I don't know how you're gonna do it. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You don't have to tell me how you're gonna mm -hmm. do it. <laughs> but I'm just gonna believe that you're going to do it. Yes. And I'm yes. going to expect it to be mm -hmm. at the door. Yeah. And so if you know, if I keep that that mindset and going before him, then I'm mm -hmm. gonna praise him. I'm mm -hmm. just gonna praising him mm -hmm. until the door opens or till, mm -hmm. till I see it at the door. Mm -hmm. I, I won't say, well, what is it doing there? How, you know, mm -hmm. it, it must be a, a his spirit, or, you mm -hmm. know, as they were saying. Mm -hmm. No, it's for us to say, you know what, God, I'm going to mm -hmm. keep believing you. Mm -hmm. That's even with, well, you know, mm -hmm. the saints are praying and petit petitioning the Lord and going before the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. something right. may not be yeah. changed, but we don't know what God is doing behind the scenes. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't know how God is operating to work out his divine purpose. So he I'm just so that's why Jesus told us men ought to always pray and not get mm -hmm. yeah. on. The apostle comes and says, pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. You know, and as we continue to mm -hmm. pray, then God moves and then we see, notice that he comes and shows himself mm -hmm. to the people of the Lord. Mm -hmm. as evidence that God is a deliverer. Yes, yes. And then, you know what, they didn't have to go after to try and do something against Herod. God dealt with him. Took care of that. Amen. That's right. You know, right. God Amen. dealt with him. Amen. And, uh, Amen. In, a, in a far worse situation, mm -hmm. scenario mm -hmm. that they could have ever done to him. Yeah. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, he cut off uh, uh, James's, or, or he murdered him. Yes. But when the yes. Lord came along and that that just showed it had worms coming out of him. Yes, yeah. right. Ate him up. Mm -hmm. Ate him up. Yes, you know, yes. It, 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 it's, it's symbolic of his pride and arrogance. Mm -hmm. God yeah. goes against any anything that that exemplifies pride. God goes against. Mm -hmm. He goes against. Mm -hmm. And he, he, you know, he felt like I'm gonna raise up against what God is doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, it doesn't matter what uh, these people are preaching or proclaiming. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a, I'm gonna do it because I want people to know who I am. Mm -hmm. God came along and destroyed him in front of everybody yeah. that he was parading himself in front of. Mm -hmm. He died right. right in front of. Him. Yeah. So, so yeah. God's gonna yeah. deal with the enemy. Amen. Amen. You know, God has Amen. a way to deal with the enemy. Mm -hmm. All he's gonna say to do is, as Elmo say, just keep on proclaiming the truth, mm -hmm. preaching the word. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, living for the Lord mm -hmm. so that the Lord's work can be done. Because, I, you know, it goes back to that 24 verse where it says, but the word of God grew God and multiplied. multiplied. Yes. Right. So yes. even through all of this, yes. God's word mm -hmm. is growing and multiplying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's growing in the lives of the believers and it's multiplying because people are coming to faith in the Lord. Is now the church is gone from that those 120 in the upper room, mm -hmm. now thousands of thousands mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are being right. saved and coming to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. As mm -hmm. they just keep on preaching the word, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. preaching the word, preaching the word, living for the mm -hmm. Lord, mm -hmm. seek, you know, seeking to please the Lord through doing what Jesus said, going into all the world and preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. So now mm -hmm. they're getting into going into all the world, the Gentile world. To preach and proclaim the gospel yes. of Jesus Christ. Yes. So, yes. So that's yes. the church, you know, Amen. as we see mm -hmm. the beginning here, that goes for us today. To right. say no matter what opposition, we're not gonna back down and you know go somewhere in the corner. We're just gonna mm -hmm. be proclaiming the truth, living for the Lord mm -hmm. until the Lord comes. Mm -hmm. You know, even Amen. through this COVID crisis and all the things that are happening and the trouble everywhere and, and the crisis in the streets. God's mm -hmm. word is yet to be preached and proclaimed for men and women to be saved. Because what will change, folks, is mm -hmm. the word of God. Amen. So Amen. If a person mm -hmm. comes to faith in Jesus Christ, they'll come out of the things they're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. They'll yeah. come away yeah. from right. those things. The Lord will mm -hmm. deliver them from those things that that's not, not only pleasing to him, but detriment, mm -hmm. detrimental to their lives. Mm -hmm. God Man. will change them around. So, you know, it's we, we've got to keep standing up and proclaiming the truth mm -hmm. and, and, and and preaching the word and standing up for for righteousness of jesus christ anybody else amen so mm -hmm. true mm -hmm. pastor mm -hmm. you made a really good point about uh peter didn't um when herod was doing all that he was doing 
Uh, Peter didn't go after him. I mean, God had used Peter mm -hmm. with miracles before this. You know, and Peter didn't get all hyper and say, you know, I'm going to call down angels against you. And True. he didn't try to do any kind of retaliation, mm -hmm. you know, and God took care of that. He just went forward. He just kept going. He kept his focus. He kept doing what God told him to do. True. And that's mm -hmm. what God is telling us that, you know, when the enemy gets busy and doing things, as long as we're in the position of prayer and worship and trusting mm -hmm. God, he'll take care. Vengeance is mine. I will repay. Yes. Say it more. So we don't have to mm -hmm. retaliate or try to get anybody back or, you know, try to fix them. We just need to keep our focus mm -hmm. on the Lord and keep moving forward. Amen. And Amen. also, uh, man can't take God's glory. That's and true. And Herod, he made the, a big, you know, he was vicious. He was cruel. And, uh, but he, you know, he let the people pump him up and he mm -hmm. was trying to take God's glory. You know, as he was God. So we, we know from experience that uh, what we do, we, we point people to Christ. We, we're not patting ourselves on the back and we're mm -hmm. not trying to get his glory because he said he, no man mm -hmm. will take his glory. So if we just lift him up, you yeah. know, that's what he said. If we just lift not ourselves up, but just lift him up, he mm -hmm. will he will save, he will deliver, he will set free. And we see how. In our lesson tonight, we see how the word of God is growing, is growing. And even in this day and time, the word of God is going forth and it's accomplishing what it's supposed to accomplish. Amen. So we mm -hmm. see that uh, you can't stop God. Can't stop you it. can't stop Amen. him. That's true. Mm -hmm. Amen. Anyone else? Um, yes, sir. I was just going to add, you know, the Bible does encourage us. When it says that for all that live godly shall suffer persecution, mm -hmm. so we 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 we're going to suffer uh, persecution. And and one time Jesus asked the disciples, He said, "Can you be baptized <clears throat> with the baptism that I have?" Mm. And I've heard people talk about the water baptism, baptism of the Holy Ghost, but then I've heard people teach and talk about the baptism baptism of suffering. So mm -hmm. we have to suffer for His namesake. And mm -hmm. when we suffer for his namesake, you know, God is getting the glory because, I mean, we, we, we teach us. We say, well, you know, you got to be crushed. You know, you got to, in order mm -hmm. for to get the olive oil, they got to crush the olive. And to get the juice from the grape, they got to crush it. So the Lord have to crush us and he have to send us to get to the, the next level that he wants us to be in through persecution. Mm -hmm. We come to the next level. Mm -hmm. So, you know, by us going through, um, in, in prayer, and it shows that when we pray, that we must be earnest. You know, we must be sincere, mm -hmm. and that's the only kind of prayer that God is going to accept. They they pray. They say Elijah, he prayed in earnest, and we see that they pray continuously to God. They say, but prayer was offered unto God continuously. Mm -hmm. So we must we, we can pray while we're walking. We can pray while we sit down or we meditating. There's so many ways that God has opened doors for us. To be able to be in contact with him in earnest Amen. And, and, and purge our heart from anything that will keep us from, you know, uh, reaching the throne of grace. But it must be in earnest. And when it's in earnest, you know, the Lord will come to our rescue because it shows it right here that mm -hmm. this man, like somebody said, he was in the dungeon. He probably they, no doubt they had to keep him somewhere and say, whatever you do, don't let him get out of your sight. Like That's I true. Bring him forward. Because I got to get, uh, Carol, I said he had to get more glory. He had to get more glory because of what he did to James, it said it's so that it pleased the Jews. So he said, yeah. well, I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to perform another wonder. I'm going to yeah. get Peter. Now, this would have been great sorrow to the church. Just like when Paul wrote in one of his um, epistles, he said that he had, he had let, um, he let somebody at Miletus, they were sick. Mm -hmm. But the Lord had delivered the person lest he would have had sorrow upon sorrow because you need as many sincere people to preach and teach the gospel as it is. So you don't need people dying. True. Just uh, somebody trying to get glory. So here mm -hmm. was, he really wanted them to you know, keep Peter. We're going to know we're going to stop these disciples. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a stop to this. So they mm -hmm. no doubt delivered him to four quartarians of soldiers. He had his hands bound so he mm -hmm. couldn't do anything. He couldn't do anything with his hands, but when that angel spoke to him 
and he obeyed, then those chains fell off. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the Lord will deliver us, but we're going to suffer mm -hmm. persecution and go through some Amen. things, but he's going to show us that he's going to be with us. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Mm -hmm. This is a good lesson. And, and I, it, it speaks not only at that time, but it speaks to us today. Mm -hmm. The word is, is spirit and life. Yeah. And, you know, and when switch situations happen, see the enemy, what is he doing here? He's attacking those leaders, the apostles. Mm -hmm. They were the enemies coming against them. Yes. What, is, what are the saints doing? They're praying. Praying. So That's when right. attacks come against the church, mm -hmm. the believer needs to be praying. Praying. Be Amen. going before right. God. Mm -hmm. Calling on the name of the Lord for him Amen. to bring deliverance, <laughs> for him to change situations. Because mm -hmm. that's our that's our weapon. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. that's the weapon that the, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, mm -hmm. uh, is our weapon, and also prayer, supplication, mm -hmm. intercession, mm -hmm. giving of thanks, be made for all men. Mm -hmm. So, as the church, that's what the church the church is doing. What it's supposed to do, even to do. right now, mm -hmm. that's in right. Situation, pray. That's right. Amen. Amen. Pray. Amen. It's not the it's not the last resort. It's mm -hmm. the first thing. First resort. Paul said, uh, first of all, prayer. Mm -hmm. so that's the first thing the believer is to be doing. And when mm -hmm. we pray, what we're, we're communicating with God, He and then He's talking to us through His Word, mm -hmm. but then it's, it's building us up on our most holy faith so yeah. that we can believe God and trust God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and know that He's able to change situations, mm -hmm. He's able to turn things around. Yes. But we yeah. have to keep. We call on his name. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Talk to him. And notice, and then what does he do? He dispatches deliverance to wherever mm -hmm. he's, uh, it needs to go. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the believer right. needs to be praying now, seeking the Lord. You know, mm -hmm. uh, gathering together the saints praying individually, mm -hmm. by, you know, alone in our prayer closets praying, mm -hmm. seeking the Lord that, that he might not only turn things around, but yes. he, he might save uh, yeah. and yeah. deliver mm -hmm. and heal because mm -hmm. he's the only one that can do it. No, yes. they they go, they do what Jesus told them to do, and mm -hmm. that was pray. Mm -hmm. The trouble is happening; they're praying. Mm -hmm. God turns it around. Why? They're seeking the Lord, and that's what yes. the believer even now is to, to be doing. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not to be fretting and becoming, you know, uh, out of sorts over what's happening. Mm -hmm. We're just talking to the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they pray. Uh, James, as we read here, James mm -hmm. was martyred. Mm -hmm. Peter was delivered. But it mm -hmm. didn't stop them from praying. It didn't stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Amen. we need to pray. Some, you know, we, we, are, we are in the will of God. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we want his will to be. We, mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. told us to pray, thy kingdom come, uh, thy, thy will, will be done. Yeah. Right. So we want his will to be done in our lives. His will may not necessarily be what we want it to be. Mm -hmm. And it's not. You know, and, and nine times out of ten, it's not. Because mm -hmm. his will is not right. our will. His will is not our will, just mm -hmm. like we have Amen. the earth. Mm -hmm. But you know what? We want to be found in his will. Yes. Amen. We want to be pleasing mm -hmm. to him. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that when trouble does come, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be able to stand. Yes, amen. when more things do happen, I believe that the saints were praying before COVID came. Oh, along. Sure. Yes. That's yes. why God is sustaining many and bringing many. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, there were some believers who passed away because of it, sure, but sure. you know what? God moves according to the counsel of His own will. Yeah. Amen. And as as mm -hmm. Mr. Tucker, as you said, those who may have gone home to be with the Lord, to be absent from the body, is to be present with the Lord. Mm -hmm. We are winners either way. Either way. Either way. Either way. We're a winner. Mm -hmm. Oh, bless you. I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You cannot be fearful. Yes. You cannot be fearful. We mm -hmm. cannot get afraid when persecution comes because mm -hmm. persecution is going to come. Amen. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we cannot be fearful. We can't go up in the corner. Yes, we're in this COVID-19 situation, but we are still to trust and to believe God that he is a deliverer and that yes. this does not hinder us from continuing to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Amen. I mean, Amen. a lot of things have stopped, yes, but the word of God will never mm. stop. It mm. can never. never be stopped. Amen. And we'll never Amen. let it stop coming out of our mouth. We have to be that example that he's calling for. I don't Amen. care what's going on in the land. God is a deliverer. He's yes, going to make is. a way for you to reach out to another and for his mm -hmm. church to continue to grow. He's calling for faith. See, because yes. even when Jesus returned, when he returned, he said that he might find faith on the earth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Looking for faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Go right ahead. I mean, look, look, um, I mean, look what he brought him through. The gate, the gate of the city. I mean, yeah. these mm -hmm. weren't you no know, small, this wasn't just no little um chain link chain link fence. This was the gate that kept the um the prison that opened and then the gate opened on its own accord. Yeah. So you know, there's nothing that can stop the power of God when when prayer and mixed with faith, you know, mm -hmm. God he, he would move and you cast away doubt. He said, Let that man pray. When he prayed, doubt and nothing, no matter what mm -hmm. it is. He True. brought him through the gate, the iron gate of the city, oh, and, and led him out on a dark street somewhere, and he still was able to find his way. So, you know, the Lord, he, he works things, you know, after the counsel of his own will. Oh, yeah. like, um, you all were saying another week when Peter, it was time for him to preach to the Gentiles. Well, mm -hmm. this was a time for the Lord to get um, uh, more glory, and then the Lord had a, a, a place for him to hide out until... You know, the things calmed down and he Absolutely. was able to keep going. So mm -hmm. God can do anything but fail. So, you know, I, I want Missionary Ford to notice also, you know, we, we can, all we have to do is keep living. Because mm -hmm. I told you already that a man told me to tell you what you had done for him mm -hmm. from the job over there. So mm -hmm. we don't know who, who we may touch. And I'll just say this is my last mm -hmm. thing. I went to uh, a guy's retirement party from work, who was, where mm -hmm. was a, a dinner. And we had sit around, he had done some good things for me, and I may have done some good things for him. But when when it got time for, for the food to be blessed, he told the people at the place, he said, well, I know Reggie, but this one thing I do know that he can do. And I want him to come up here and pray for this food. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. what he wanted. Amen. See, so saying, we don't know who we may touch, but that's Ooh. what he said in front of that's a lot right. of people. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said, this, I know that he can do this. Mm -hmm. So we don't know who we might be touching. That's and true. so you know we we are we are affecting, but we must, you know, live and show forth, you know, the praise of him that brought us out of darkness so into the true. Light. Uh, so true. Amen. 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 You can be against oh, you. Many different people can be against you, and you don't even know mm -hmm. it. But God can be working it out, you know, to show them, you know, you know, you know, this, you know, this is not the time for that. And he can deliver you and you not knowing. That he can be delivered, that you've been delivered from something that you have no control over. But That's God knows. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyone else? This is a wonderful lesson tonight. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All of the word is great. And Amen. this whole uh, uh, book has been, is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And is. we thank God for what the Lord, you know, as I think it was Ella Moulton that was saying, you know, we read over the, the book of Acts, but God just, you know, gives us greater oh, understanding yeah, and yeah, open up our yeah. even more to various things mm -hmm. and then, mm -hmm. you know, brings things to life because of what we see going on even mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. you know, um, in our culture today. Go ahead, man. Um, Pastor, in this lesson, is telling me to, to trust God. Yes. You know, no, you know, um, he's powerful mm -hmm. and we see how he took care of them. Amen. You know, mm -hmm. they were doing God's work. They were That's standing right. there. They was playing mm -hmm. the scene. They were doing, you know, they was preaching. Mm -hmm. And like you said, this was saved is we got preached the, the gospel. Mm -hmm. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. But we see how Jesus protected them. Yes. And so it just let us know that uh, he's a spirit. You can't, you, you, you got to have faith that he's working. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. You got to have faith. You know, we plant the seed. And he do the work. You know, he has right. to say, Amen. you know, somebody going to come along and water it. That's he has to give the increase. We don't have power to give no increase. That's we true. We just right. obey and do what he tell us to do. Amen. So I, it just encouraged me to, you know, um, obey him and trust him. Yes. He's going to do what he's going to do. What he Amen. say he's going to do, 
He's going to do it. But I got to make sure I obey him. Amen. Do your part. Amen. Yeah, do my part. That's right. Mm -hmm. Do my part. Because Jesus is working all the time. Yes, he's he is. working mm -hmm. all the time. Amen. Yes. yes, he is. Yes, he Amen. is. He never sleeps nor slumbers. No, Amen. that's right. Yes. Never. This is a, oh, this is a powerful lesson. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, we thank God tonight for those who have joined in with us from Greater St. James and friends and well wishers. And we thank God for you. This is a wonderful Bible study. Yes. We want you to uh, not only read along with us, but we want you to just read the whole uh, book yourself and see what the Lord is speaking to your heart. Amen. God is speaking Amen. to his people through mm -hmm. his word. Mm -hmm. And we want to receive that word with gladness and singleness of heart. Mm -hmm. and now, as we see, we're going into the 13th chapter. and We'll see now yes. the second phase going along mm -hmm. with the growing of the church and yeah. how God will begin even to use uh, uh, Saul of Tarsus, oh, who is now Paul, mm -hmm. the apostle oh. of the Lord Jesus Christ, even in a greater way, mm -hmm. and how the gospel is being preached uh, throughout Asia Minor and all the territories mm -hmm. and you know what that same gospel is being preached today Jesus Christ the same Amen. yesterday Amen. Today, Amen. and forever it's the yeah. same gospel being preached it's the same, same gospel it hasn't changed mm -hmm. Jesus Never Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father mm -hmm. so we thank God for all of you joining in with us again we yes. thank God for Elder Reginald Moulton uh, Mother Barbara Tucker, Missionary Barbara Tucker, Missionary Regina White, Missionary Linda Ford Bless you, being sir. here with us. And we've been joining in these Wednesdays. The Lord, this is the last Wednesday, Wednesday in, in the, the, the year of 2020. <laughs> you know what? It's been God all the way. All the way. has brought us up to this we give him praise. We give him glory. We magnify his name. Mm -hmm. He is a great God and greatly to be praised. So we thank Amen. God for you. Did anyone else want to just say hello to the saints and before we cut off? Mm -hmm. God bless say, bless the saints. Yeah. Enjoy God bless. We enjoyed our Bible class. I hope you all have enjoyed it because we have very much. Thank yeah. God for this time. Uh -huh. All Let right, God. Peace be unto the saints. And Amen. with that, we're going to say peace be multiplied. God yes. bless you all. We want you to also join in with us. We'll be on prayer call at 7.30 a.m. on tomorrow, which is Thursday. Also Amen. on New Year's Day, 7.30 a.m. Join in with us prayer. You can go on our webpage and see the information that you can join in. And then Friday, we will come Friday evening with a Bible study on Friday evening. And we, if we don't see you, we want to say God bless you. May you have a prosperous new year. May the Lord Amen. go with you and keep you is our prayer. God bless you. Be healed. The, yes, go ahead. On the 31st, the uh, watch meeting service. Yes, we'll be online for our watch meeting service at starting at 1130. It'll start at 1130, and we want you to join in with us. So with that, we want you to be healed. Be strengthened and be set free Preach in the name amen. of the Lord Jesus. God bless you tonight. Amen. God, bless you. Amen. God, bless you. God bless you this evening. We praise God for you joining in on this evening to be a part of our Friday evening Bible study. At this time, we're celebrating a new year which the Lord has brought us into 2021. By God's grace, he has brought us to this time. So as we talk to you on this Friday evening, we say God bless you. May the Lord strengthen you. May he continue to guide you in his wisdom and in his mercy. And another day that the Lord has brought us, and we give him praise for that. We're in the book of Hebrews we're in the 12th chapter this evening what a wonderful book all of God's word is powerful and inspiring and brings life to us however the epistle of Hebrews is special because it 
gives us a foundation of who Jesus is and all that he has fulfilled that has been given to us by God. All of the types and all of the uh, material, all of those patriots that lived for God were just a glimpse of who Jesus is. And so the Hebrew writer reveals to us all that Jesus is. He is the fullness of God bodily. And so we praise God for this epistle and we want you to meditate on it again. We're coming to the end of this epistle, but we want you again to read over it again and see if those things are so as the Lord speaks to your heart. This is Pastor Torrance Markham, Greater St. James Temple, Church of God in Christ. And we thank God for you joining in with us on tonight. We're going to pray and then we're going to go right into the word of the Lord. Father, we just love you. And again, we praise you and thank you for bringing us to this time. It's been your grace that's brought us safe thus far. And it's your grace that's going to continue to lead us on. And we thank you, Lord, just for the opportunity to come before you in your word. Oh, God, if we say forever, oh, Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Let it be settled in our hearts. There will be not just hearers of your word, but God, work within us, the willing to do of your good pleasure. There will be doers of your word. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to serve you with gladness. And we praise you for the victory that we have in the name of Jesus. Now continue to bless us and let your word fall on the good ground of our hearts. We'll praise you for it in Christ's name. Amen. So we're looking at the 12th chapter. We've been through the 11th chapter, powerful chapter, expressing to us uh, those that believed God, even in the midst of what they could not see. Yet they believed the one true God. We see it's called uh, the hall of faith. Those that trusted and believed God, no matter the circumstances, no matter the condition that happened in their lives, they believed God. And so their belief and trust in God is the faith that we have today, the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. And isn't it wonderful but all, that all of those that believed God in, that di in those dispensations of time and we who believe God in this dispensation of time, the dispensation of grace, we're all going to be gathered together around the throne of God. Oh, bless the name of God. When we all meet together, all of the patriots and prophets and all of the the Old Testament believers and the New Testament believers that are in the epistles that we read and the letters that we read, not only them, but all of those saints that have gone ahead of us to meet the Lord. We're all going to gather together and it will be the faith and trust in God that will that will bring us to the throne of grace. So we praise God for that. So that faith, trusting and depending God uh, substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen faith is the confidence that what uh, we hope for will actually come to pass so faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually come to pass and know what we it is volunt it is a volitional surrender and obedience in spite of appearance appearances so our faith no matter what the circumstance or condition we're trusting and knowing that god he's going to get the victory because all things are working together for good because we love the lord and we call according to his purpose so when we get into the 12th chapter now it's speaking to the believer it has spoken about who jesus is that he's the greater than uh the angels he's the greater than moses he's the greater than the law greater than joshua greater than abraham greater than everything that that uh, the the tabernacle and the instruments in the tabernacle and all of these things jesus is the greater he is the superior to so therefore he has fulfilled all things and since all these things are a reality that jesus in jesus christ we have all that god the father 
desires us to have. Now, the 12th chapter speaks to all of us as believers on what we're to do to let our faith grow and mature and develop in the will and the and the way of the Lord. So we begin with uh, Hebrews, the 12th chapter and that first verse saying, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Those are the, the in the 11th chapter, those witnesses who held on by faith. All of those patriots and prophets that held on by faith and not only them, we have a great cloud of witnesses of believers that have gone on to be with the Lord. All of those saints that have uh, affected our lives and poured into our lives as they lived for the Lord and served the Lord and obeyed God, they poured into our lives. They are a greater cloud of witnesses. So it says, since we have, we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, witnesses of the fact that they obeyed God, that their faith was in God, it says to us here, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So what, what is the writer saying here? It says, let, let us lay aside the bulk, uh, anything that affects our running this race, which is unbelief, that, that is cleverly, uh, concealed and sometimes ambushes us from trusting and believing God. So it wants us to lay aside the weight and the sin, those things that hinder our growth in God, hinder our faith growing and expanding in God. Lay them aside. That means anything that's not pleasing to the Lord that we see that he has revealed to us through his word by the power of the Holy Ghost, he says, lay it aside every way. And the sin that does so easily beset us and let us run this race uh, with patience, the race that is set before us. And notice our eyes are fixed on who we're running to. Second verse says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Notice in Jesus Christ, our faith is rooted and grounded in the Lord Jesus Christ, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So notice Jesus Christ fulfilled all things. He was the perfect sacrifice for sin. Notice he endured the cross despising the shame and because he obeyed God, God raised him up on the third day with all power and all authority and he is on the right hand side of the throne of God making intercession for the believer. We have a mediator. And now notice, because we have a mediator, which is Jesus Christ, we can come boldly before the throne of grace. That whatever we need, God is able to supply to us. Sometimes all we need is a fresh word that will keep us going. Sometimes we just need God to encourage our heart and, and strengthen us. And, and let us know that he's with us always, even until the end of the world. Notice this, verse 3 says, For consider him that endured such contradictions of sinners against him, lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. So he's saying, he, what the writer is saying here, look to Jesus. When you feel as though you need to give up or quit or throw in the towel or the, the opposition is great, or the persecution is great, or the obstacles are great. We're to focus on Jesus and see. Notice, he endured the cross, despising the shame, the contradiction of sinners that were against him. Notice, all of the things that came against him, he went about doing good, healing all manner of sickness and disease because the Lord was with him. Yet, they despised and rejected him. But he didn't give up. He didn't quit. He didn't throw in the towel. He didn't succumb to uh, uh, fear or be tormented by fear. He went on. He pressed on. Even in the garden, he pushed on. He went on to fulfill the will of God the Father. Now, notice, he's sitting on the right-hand side of God the Father. So it said, consider his determination. Consider how he lived. Consider what he went through. Lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. 
Notice he deals with the mind because the enemy comes to wear down our mind. With the mind, we serve the Lord. Things can become heavy in our mind. Circumstances, conditions can come against our mind. But notice if he will keep the imperfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. And notice, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That's why we need to saturate ourselves with the word of God, meditating and studying the word of God, because we need to get the word in our thinking. We need to get the word in our under in our uh, mind so that we can grasp hold of faith so that we can hold on through the tests and trials that come against us. Look at this. Ye have not resisted unto blood striving against sin. So he's speaking to us. He's saying you haven't resisted unto blood or you haven't uh, uh, suffered and and been uh, beaten because of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's saying you haven't suffered. Ye have not resisted unto blood striving against sin. All right. Speaking to the disciples. All right. Speaking to us today, we need to understand that. Notice we can live for the Lord. Jesus Christ has made it possible for us to have life and that more abundantly. And notice he paid the ultimate price. He poured out his life that we might have eternal life. And so he's saying here, look unto Jesus. That's who we need to be looking unto as we're in these turmoil, uh, tumultuous times and all that's going on that we see. We need to continue to focus our eyes on Jesus. Psalm 37 and 37 says, Mark the perfect man and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. The perfect man is Jesus Christ. And we need to continue to focus our eyes on him. Look to the hills from which cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Lord. Jesus Christ is that rock, that rock in the weary land that gives deliverance, that gives hope. And we need to look to Jesus. All right, it says, and ye have forsaken the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked. And rebuked of him, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourges every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons now what i want you to understand is god is working in us that's what we need to understand god is perfecting us all right uh, scourging has to deal with correction all right and we need correction the word comes to encourage us and also comes to correct us so scourging deals with uh correction and then uh if we're going in the wrong direction, all right, if, if, if uh, it, it comes to correct us when we get out of line, get out of the behavior that God wants us to be in. Chastening has to deal with instruction. So chastening gives to deal with instructing us in the right behavior. So if we're going in the right direction, going the way God wants us to, to go, chastening has to deal with continually uh, focusing on helping us to go in that right direction so scourging has to deal with if we're going in the wrong direction to help get us right chastening has to deal with that if we're going in the right direction to help keep us going in the right direction so the word of god is quick and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword and as we meditate on the word the word cleanses us cleanses our heart gives us direction on how to live and by the Holy Ghost empowers us to obey the Lord. So when the Lord comes and gives us, chastens us to, to help keep us focused in the right direction, we need to thank God that the Lord loves us and that we're his children. Uh, a, a, a father who loves his children is going to correct his children. A father that does not love his children are going to let him do whatever. Let him act in whatever behavior. Why? Because he doesn't care. 
but a father, a parent who's concerned about the child, concerned about that child's future, knows that that child has to have discipline in their life in order to live in the society in which we're in. Then that parent will discipline that child. It will instruct that child in the way that is right, will help them stay in the, in the right path. And then when they get off center or off course, we'll, we'll scourge them or discipline them to get them going in the right direction. What we see now in the culture today, we see a culture that doesn't want to be disciplined. Uh, I've heard people who have said they're in the body of Jesus Christ and, and say, oh, you know, it's just too many rules and all of this. You know, you know what it is? It's not that there are too many rules. It's that you don't want to obey the rule. Because when you want to obey, it's not, Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. When you have a desire to obey God, you want to please him. You want to do what is pleasing to the Lord. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So if we love God, we seek to please him. So his commandments are not grievous to us because we love him and we want to obey him. But if I don't want to obey him, then they become grievous. And I, then I look at it, oh, it's just too much. And you got all this, uh, you know, people need to be free. No, Jesus has set us free from the yoke of sin and bondage. But now we're yoked to Jesus. See, we have to understand that. We've been set free from the yoke of sin and bondage. He, Jesus said, he, he who the son set free is free indeed. But now we're yoked and tied to Jesus. So wherever he's going, that's where we want to find ourselves going. All right. So we're, we're children of God. We say we're, we're, uh, uh, the writer James, uh, John said, now are we the sons of God. So if we're sons, if we're children, if you're a, a child of God, a daughter of the Most High King, a son of the Most High King, then you look for God to keep you in the right direction. See, if we obey the word, the word shows us the right direction. The word chastens us. But then when things happen because we've stepped off center or turned away from what God wants us to do, then he has to discipline us. Then he has to get us and correct us going in the, to get us going in the right direction. All right? Then it says, furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence. So notice he's using the natural example of how we've had fathers who corrected. Notice he uses fathers here because in, in, in the Old Testament, even in the uh, New Testament, in the early uh, writings of the New Testament, fathers were the ones who would discipline the children. All right. It says here, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live so he's saying then we yield ourselves to god our father we have a right to call him father through jesus christ jesus said when you pray you say our father later on in, Ro in romans the eighth chapter says abba father he is our father since he's our father he has the right and responsibility and authority to keep us going in the right direction. And when we get offline or when we get going the wrong direction, he has the authority and the responsibility to get us going back in the right direction because he loves us. It's not God is not in heaven with a big stick waiting on us to do something wrong. No, God loves us and he's for us. He wants us to do good. He wants us to please him. He, he, he loves us. He's not wanting to come against us and just to destroy us. He's not willing any perish, but I'll come to repentance. So we have to understand when you turn away from God, you made that decision. And therefore, you have to go to the place where all those who reject God will go, and that's hell. So God is not sending you there. You sent yourself there because you've turned away from God. So, my friends, God loves us, but if we don't love him, we will not be with him forever. Only those that love him and, and seek him, seek to please him, will be in heaven with him. All right? Let's go on. It says here, 10th verse, For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might, what, be partakers of his holiness. Notice, God 
in his chastening, in his instruction to continue for us to go in the right direction by the word of God and through the spirit. He wants us to be partakers of his holiness. God is holy. We are his be holy people, which means God is continuously working in us his sanctifying power. Sanctification means separating us, pulling us, drawing us closer to him, drawing us away from the things and the, the, the ungodliness and perverseness of the world and drawing us to him sanctifying setting us apart that we might be meat for the master's use that we can be used for him and his kingdom all right and he's working his holiness which who he is god is holy he cannot detour away from away from his holiness his very nature is holy and so therefore through jesus christ we are his be holy people he's working in us the willing to do of his good pleasure. And so what? He chases us. Notice that that he for our profit that we might what? Be partakers of his holiness. So whatever we're going through, God is working in us. The willing to do of his good pleasure, drawing us as as we've said yes to Jesus. And the power of the Holy Ghost is working in us. God wants his holiness to be in us see holiness is not a denomination is not a group of people that feel like they're superior to somebody else no holiness is who god is every denomination every church ought to be a church that's seeking for the holiness of god not just a group over here and some over there every church is to be seeking for the holiness of god to be in our lives and god every day has to work his holiness and his righteousness in us because we are his be holy people he said to israel be ye holy for i am holy he says to us today be ye holy for i am holy all right what does it say here now no chastening for the present seems to be joyous but grievous nevertheless afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby notice say it doesn't feel good but you know what it's doing is working the peaceable fruit of righteousness in us as we go through and we seek to please the lord and the things happen in our lives god is working his peaceable fruit of righteousness in us fruit unto holiness the end everlasting life two things that we ought to be bringing forth fruit first thing is bringing forth fruit unto holiness a life that's pleasing to god second thing is fruit in terms of salvation those being saved those coming to faith in the lord jesus christ we need to be uh work asking the lord to work in our hearts to be an example that others may know the lord jesus christ and live for him 12 verse says wherefore lift up your head with hands lift up your hands with hang down and the and the feeble knees so notice now he's speaking a word here of encouragement lift up your hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight path for your feet 13 verse lest that which is lame be turned out of the way but let it rather be healed so he's saying let god heal every area of your life we need to understand that, my friends, that God is yet working in us to be healed, our mind to be healed, our heart to be healed. Crisis and situations that we go through, not to allow the enemy to work defeat or depression in our mind, but to let the Lord heal our mind. Go through the process of letting the Lord heal you, what ails you, circumstances, condition that weigh heavy on your heart letting the lord heal you he sent his word to heal them not only a physical healing but mentally healing spiritually healing that you can draw strength that you can go forward in the lord praise the name of jesus and notice what it says here 14 verse follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord notice follow peace with all men and holiness the peace of god ruling in our heart and notice because the peace of god is ruling in our heart then holiness is working in us 
and no man shall see the Lord. Now that also works in terms of seeing the Lord's face in peace, but also it operates in the fact that people around us need to see the holiness of God working in our lives. We are to be examples of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are epistles written of men. They ought to see Christ working in our lives. That's why it is important to continue to do what Paul, what the writer said in the first verse of this chapter, lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Why? Because we have to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. I'm here to tell you, my, my friends, my dears and friends, I'm here to tell you, God is yet a holy God. God is holy. It doesn't matter who else is not holy. God's word is true. If I'm wrong, God's word is still right. If you're wrong, God's word is still right. God's word is true, and he's calling for holiness. Even in 2021, he's yet calling for holiness. He's yet calling for a people to seek to please him and let his righteousness work in their lives. Listen to what it says here. 15, 15 verses, looking diligently, lest any, any man fail of the grace of God. Notice what it says here. Fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. And what he's saying here is the root of bitterness comes from doubt and fear. All right? Doubt and fear and uh, not believing and not trusting God. All right, uh, not believing God, not trusting him. And what happens is when you stop trusting God, when you cease from uh, uh, seeking to let God's word work in you, you begin to draw back from God. Now, when you draw back from God, then the enemy starts speaking to your mind. Doubt and fear and suspicion starts working in your mind. And what do you do? You become bitter against God. You begin to resent God. There are many people who uh, things happen in their life, and instead of them drawing closer to God, they became bitter against God. Then they begin to say there is no God because why? They pulled away from God. You don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. We want to draw nine to God, and he will draw nine to us. We don't understand everything that happens in our life. We don't understand why God takes us in this direction but notice we're to understand that God loves us and how do we know he loves us because he gave his only begotten son and how do we know that Jesus loved us because he gave his life and God raised up Jesus on the third day with all power then we know that God loves us he's concerned about us he's working good all things are working together for good because we love the Lord and we're called according to his purpose all right, so we don't want a bitterness to work in our heart, to be resentful against God, to feel as though God doesn't care or that, that uh, he's not in control. God is in control, and he's concerned about us. All right, then it says here, 16 verse says, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. See, and when we go back over the scripture, we see that that uh, Jacob was a supplanter. He was a deceiver. But we also see the mindset of Esau. Esau wasn't concerned about the birthright. It didn't mean anything to him. My friends, you're on dangerous ground when the things of God don't mean anything to you. How many people have have just given over to the devil because they don't think that the things of God mean anything to them. My friend, these things are precious. God's word is precious. Prayer is precious. Seeking the Lord and fasting and praying is precious. All these things are precious to us. They're gems. God's word is gem. The presence of the Lord is a blessing to us. We sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. All of these things are special to us. We're not to feel as though they're nothing and they're countless and they mean nothing. That's what Esau felt. <clears throat> and notice he sold his birthright. He sold it for some soup. Sold it for soup. Gave it away. 
because it meant nothing to him. My friends, a life living for Christ ought to mean something to us. All right, let's go on. It says here, <clears throat> For ye know that, that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, notice, it was what the Bible said, he rejected it. He was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. So notice, he was rejected because he had rejected it. And so notice, all of the, the crying meant nothing because he had rejected what the precious thing that God was giving. And notice, Jacob received the blessing. But Esau, he gave it up. He just turned it on. It didn't mean anything. And see, when something doesn't mean anything to you, you give it away for nothing. Just anybody come along, you just sell it for anything. Because it means nothing to you. A walk, a relationship with God ought to mean something to the believer. And that you know what? It means so much that I'm not just going to give it away to do anything I want to do. To live any kind of way I want to live. A life for Christ ought to be precious to us that we're not just going to turn away and disobey God just for the whim, just just to do it. But we love God and we want to obey him. And our meat is to do the will of God, our purpose for life. God has called us for a purpose, and that, that purpose is to obey and serve and please God. Let's go on here. It says, For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, now, notice, he's taking us back to when the children of Israel had been called out of Egypt, and now God calls them to Mount Sinai, and God says to them he's going to speak to them. All right? It says here, And that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. What did they say? God was so power, so powerful and so awesome around Mount Sinai because he had told the people, all right, I'm going to speak to you. Told them to clean up, to sanctify themselves. Told them they, they, they fenced in around the, the mountain. Nobody was to touch the mountain. That's showing you how holy God is. And he began to speak and thunder and lightning and, and darkness and blackness and fire and all of these things. And they said, we don't want to hear from you. We want to hear from Moses. That's what, <coughs> excuse me, what that's showing is that God is holy God. He is a holy God. No man can look on God and live. God is calling for holiness. He's the same God that spoke to the children of Israel in Old Testament. And now through Jesus Christ, he works his holiness in us because Jesus Christ has come into our life, destroyed the work of the enemy, filled us with the glory of God through the power of the Holy Ghost, and he wants us to live for him. God is a holy God, my friends. All right, let's go on. 20 verse says, For they could not endure that which was commanded. Uh huh. And if so, much as a beast touched the mountain, it should be stoned. Or thrust through with a dart. That shows you how, how holy God was. Nobody could come around that mountain. Nobody could touch the mountain. They had to surround the mountain, but nobody could touch it. Because God is showing his holiness. See, God is holy. He cannot go against his very nature. And his very nature is holy. And no, now notice, that means nothing unholy can come before his presence. So we had to be made holy through Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus, the life of Jesus Christ is important. Because he brought forth God's holiness in our lives so that we can live for the Lord. And he's working God's holiness and righteous in us, righteousness in us by the power of the Holy Ghost. Are you listening tonight? Let's go on. See what it says here. And it says, uh-huh, and 21st verse, and so terrible was the sight that Moses said I exceedingly fear and quake notice now the, he even Moses himself is fearful of all of the splendor that was around Mount Sinai but now notice 
he, he changes from that and comes to the fellowship now that we have and that has been made possible through Jesus Christ. What he spoke about from the 18th down to the 21st verse had to deal with them being under the law. But, uh, but now, because Jesus Christ has fulfilled the law and Jesus Christ has made it possible for us to be saved, because he died on the cross and rose victoriously and lives forever. And we have received him in our lives as our Lord and Savior. And he's filled us with his spirit. Then he speaks to us now and says, the 22nd verse says, But ye are come unto the Mount Sinai. All right, this is the heavenly now. And unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Notice the glory and the splendor of God when you read in Revelation uh, of the happenings in the fifth chapter around the throne of God, all of the holiness and wonder and splendor and majesty of God. Uh huh. It says in 23rd verse, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Notice this. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Abel, and that's in Genesis 4 and 4. Notice this. Now, th this, is who, this is the fellowship that we have, my dears and sirs, with the general assembly of the church of the firstborn which are written in heaven. Notice, that's the believer. And to God, the, the, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Those that are in heaven now, and to the, this is the church, the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. Our names are written in the Lamb Book of Life. That's the fellowship that we have. That's been made possible. Notice now, notice the closeness here that's spoken. The, and when you go back to the 18th through the 21st verse, you see the fear that was there. You see all of the things, the, 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 even Moses said, I, in the 21st verse, said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Notice, but you don't see any fear when you go down now to this 22nd verse and keep going down. You, you don't see any fear here because what? Through Jesus Christ, all of that has been removed. We have fellowship. We can come to the throne of grace. We can come to the presence of the Lord. We have that through Jesus Christ today. That is something that we ought to praise God for and magnify and give God glory. So notice what it says here. So it speaks to the believer here again. He says, see that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if, if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. So notice, who's speaking from heaven? Hebrews 1 and 1, God in sundry times and diverse manners, spoken to the fathers by the prophets in these last days, speaking unto us by his son. So what the, 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 the writer is saying here, how much more will you, will you receive judgment if you don't hear from him who's speaking from heaven? The judgment of God was upon those in the Old Testament who heard the men, the prophets and the patriarchs who were on earth speaking and judgment came to them who refused what they said. How much more will judgment come to us if we don't hear what Jesus is saying? Now, my friends, it doesn't matter who doesn't believe. What if some don't believe? God's word is going to stand when the world's on fire. When this world is on fire, God's word is going to stand forever. And they that were ready went in. All of those that have fellowship with Jesus Christ, filled with the presence of God, the power of the Holy Ghost, have fellowship with God through Jesus Christ, are going to be in the presence of the Lord. Those who reject the truth, those who turn away from the truth, those who cast the truth away will not have eternal fellowship with God. All right, let me keep reading here. It says, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, yet once more I will shake not the earth only, but also the heaven. Notice, heaven and the earth. When God's judgment comes against this world, it's going to be against the heavens and the earth. And we read that when we were in the Revelations, the book of Revelations. 
the judgment that God is going to bring upon this earth. And it's real. This the, this is not made up. This is not something that somebody's given us so he can keep us down and keep us oppressed. God's word gives life. He who has the son have life. He who have not the son have not life. Life is only in Jesus Christ. The hope that we have of eternal life is in Jesus Christ. And so notice, there's going to come a day when God's going to shake both the heavens and the earth. It says here, 27th verse says, And this word ye once more signify the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. So notice, all of that, you know, what happens is that which is foundational will stand forever. See, when, sh when the shaking goes on, that which is, is sturdy and foundational will stand. That which is not will be removed. When we read back in Matthew, and Jesus gave the parable of the man who built his house on the sand and the man who built his house on the rock. The man who built his house on the sand, when trouble came, when, when the storm came, his house fell. The man who built his house on the rock when the storms and the winds blew, his house stood because he was founded on the rock. My friends, I'm telling you, our faith is foundational. It's on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. And it's going to stand when the world is on fire. When all trouble is around us, God's word is going to stand. That's why we have to stand in the word of God. We have to stand on the word of God. Stand in the word of God. Believe the word of God. Doubt not. Do not let fear rule in our hearts. Don't let doubt rule in our hearts. Don't let suspicion rule in our hearts. Believing God, excuse me, believing God and trusting God, knowing that God is going to bring you through victorious through Jesus Christ. Why? Because you have fellowship with God. You can talk to the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? We have a relationship with God that even Abraham did not have. And he was called the father of faith. We can go into the presence of the Lord through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost. Isn't that wonderful today? Because what? We're looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. And so as God takes us through and works in us the willing to do of his good pleasure, we go through trial of our faith. And as he chases us because we're his children, it would what to bring out the peaceable fruit of righteousness in us. We say yes to the will of God. All right, let's finish this up. It says, wherefore, we, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Isn't that it? See, this is what he's saying here. See, all of the kingdom of this world, God's going to shake them. What's happening now, the kingdom of, these wor of this world, the, all of these kingdoms are being shaken, economically shaken. Naturally, natural disasters are shaking this, the, these nations. Pestilence shaking the nations. Famine shaking the nations. All of these things are shaking the nations. But I'm here to tell you, all of these things that are happening are not going to shake the kingdom of God. It says here, wherefore we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. Notice, cannot be moved, cannot be diminished, cannot be destroyed. The kingdom of God. We're in the kingdom. We're in fellowship with the king of kings and lord of lords. Thy kingdom come. That is, that is the prayer that Jesus told us to pray. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of God is, is not meat or drink, but it's righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Oh, bless his name. Notice what it says here. Wherefore, we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. And now it speaks to us. It says, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. So not, notice, notice it's saying since we have all of these things that God has given us through Jesus Christ, it said, let us uh -huh, have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For God is a consuming fire. That, that, that speaks for itself right there. God is a consuming fire. 
And I'm here to tell you, my friends, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Thank God for Jesus. As we go into 2021, let us go into this, this new year praising God and magnifying him for the great things that he has done for us through Jesus Christ. Let us go on to perfection. Let us mature in the grace and the wisdom of God. Let's, let's let God have more of our life, rule in our life, spread out in us. Let us draw closer unto him. Let us go on to perfection in him. Let God work in us. He's a great God. He's doing great things. He's brought us to this time. He didn't have to do it it's because of his grace and his mercy. And he's given us through Jesus Christ that he's brought us to this time. And he's brought us to this time for a purpose. And let's recognize and realize that what God has given to us is precious. It's not to be taken lightly. It's not to be treated haphazardly. This great salvation that he's given to us is precious. It's more precious than silver or gold. More precious than, than all of the treasures of Egypt. More precious than all of the treasures that are in this country. Our salvation, this great salvation. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What shall he give in exchange for his soul? Because we have this treasure in the earthen vessels, let us go on bearing his reproach. Let us go on to perfection, maturing in the things of God. Hold on and trust God, my friends. This great uh, epistle of Hebrews is a word that just stirs our spirit to know that God has done all these things for us through Jesus Christ. We have this great treasure that he's given us in Jesus Christ. So, my friends, I want to thank God for you this evening joining in with us. This is a wonderful chapter showing us that, that God wants us to move up more in who he is, to draw closer to him. Anything that hinders us in living for the Lord, in obeying the Lord, in pleasing the Lord, as we study the word of God and as we let the Holy Ghost rule in our heart, God shows us how we're to live for him how we're to please him, how we are to obey him. Our cry in 2000, uh, 2021 ought to be, Lord, here I am. I hear your voice. I want to obey you. I want to please you. God bless you, my friends, and thank God for you joining in with us tonight and being here with us on this Friday evening, a new year, a new day, a new time. Uh, great expectations in God. God has brought us through and he's going to continue to carry us on. I want to thank God for you. I want you to know that uh, on Saturday, we have our missionary, uh, missionary Regina White, who's starting a new series, a uh, six-week series that will be on personalities. It will start on Saturday, January the 2nd, and our time will be at 9.30, so we want you to join her at 9.30 a.m. She will be going forth teaching in the word of the Lord, uh, teaching series on personalities, a good uh, material that you need to have and meditate on and see what the word of the Lord says to you. So we want you to join in with her. That will be Saturday, January the 2nd, starting at 9.30 a.m. And then Sunday, the first Sunday in this new year of 2021, first Sunday in the month of January, which will be January the 3rd, we will have our morning worship that will be here at the sanctuary and also on our Facebook page, website, and YouTube channel, and it will begin at 10.30 a.m. We want you to join in with us. Either you can come and worship with us here or you can join in on our Facebook page, website, or uh, YouTube. And what we want you to do is like and share. We want you to like and share whatever if the Lord has blessed you with whatever you've heard even on tonight or what you've heard in the past or even uh, what the Lord will give as we go forward. We want you to like it and share it. 
and let someone else know that God is working in their lives. We thank God for you. Also, in the month of uh, January will be our consecration month. What we'll be doing is asking the saints to pray with us, and we will be fasting from from sunup to sundown. That will be if a uh, time frame of 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, for each week, uh, Monday through Friday, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. We're asking all of the saints, those from Greater St. James, those are our friends and well wishes, join in us as we go before the Lord. We'll be praying, continuously praying. Men ought to always pray and not faint. We need to seek the Lord. Seek ye the Lord well, while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. And we want God to intervene. Most of all, we want Lord, the Lord to save and deliver, to touch hearts and minds, to destroy the yoke of the enemy and give life for that more abundantly. We praise God for the victory in Jesus. So we want you to be joining us in this month of as we're in January, as we go forth, we want you to go forth with us and you can continue to join us on Wednesday evening, our Bible study, and also on uh, Friday, our Bible study, pastoral Bible study, and then we have prayer going on, conference call prayer that will be going on. Uh, at noon on Tuesdays and Fridays, uh, and also at 7 on Tuesday evenings and on Thursdays at 7 o'clock. So we want you to join in with us and on our webpage, which is www.gsjministries.com. All of our information is there where you can join in with us by way of uh, Internet or physically coming and being a part of the worship here, which is Sunday at 10 30 a.m and then finally my dears and sirs this is the new year new day great expectations in the lord looking for god to take us on further in his glory and in his power we want you to give support the work of the lord we're blessed when we give let us sow into the work of the lord god's work done god's way never lack god's supply you can also go on our web page www.gsjministry.com you can see all of the venues that we have where it makes it makes it accessible for you to give and support the work of the Lord. Why not start the new year by being a blessing to the Lord? So in to the work of the Lord and let the Lord bless you. It is a blessing in giving. And giving did not start in, in the Mosaic law. Giving came before uh, Moses was ever born. Giving, uh, we see God gave even with the patriots and prophets of old. And we see God establishes in the heart of Abraham a heart to give. So let God work in your heart as we give of our tithing and our offering. God will bless us. So we say thank God again for you joining in with us tonight. May the Lord bless you as we've gone forth through the word tonight. I pray that God has said something to encourage you in the way of the Lord. So I say to you, my friends, be healed, be delivered, and be set free in the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you. And have a good day. Good morning. God bless you. Happy New Year. I bring you greetings from the Greater St. James Church of God in Christ, where Superintendent Torrance Markham is my pastor. God bless you. It's good to be back with you again. We're in a new year and a new start, new beginning. So we just... Uh, Pray the old year out and worshiped the new year in. And so we're going to get started with a new series today. This is going to be for five weeks, the whole month of January. And we're going to talk about personalities. Oh, my goodness. We all have personalities. There's not one person on this earth that does it. So we, we need to talk about it. It's an important topic. Let's start with prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this morning and for this new year. And just ask you to open our hearts to understand your word and your will and to be led by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God created your personality, so it's pretty important. So you need to understand what it's all about. Sometimes we don't even understand why we do what we do. We have genetics. Some 
parts come from grandma, some come from uncle, some come from mom, dad, some come from great, great, great grandparents. Those genes get mixed up and here you are in your personality. So sometimes we don't know why we do certain things and we kind of feel like, well, where did that come from? It could be great, great grandma. It's amazing how God puts us together and works our DNA for his purpose, for what he wants. So we want to see what God has to say about personalities. Well, he created it. So it isn't just some counselor thing. It's, you know, some psychological thing. God created you. And just as you are is the way he created you. The only thing that needed to change is that he needed to get the pen out and put his spirit in. And so that's the only thing that he did to shift you. But you are still you. Peter didn't change in terms of how he spoke out. God didn't change that part. That's the part God created in him. But he changed the language he used. He changed the spirit, uh, the attitude of Peter. And he went on to do great things for God. So we're going to talk about personalities. Um, it's important for you to understand that you're not a mistake. You're, you're not uh, warped or you're not, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> insane or any of that kind of thing because you're different. You are blessed when you're different. You're blessed to be different. This is God's will. We're like a fruit basket or a salad. You have all the different ingredients. They're all separate, but they come together to make one thing. And so embrace your personality. Who are you? What's the combination of characteristics God put together? make you. It's for his purpose. And so when we think of it in terms of God's will, then we can pray and ask him to perfect. He said he'll perfect that, which concerns you. So you don't have to feel down or depressed because you're different. Hold on to that because that's a protection for you. Some people are very, you know, they're outgoing and it's called extrovert. They, they can talk, they can be the life of the party, but then there are others who are introvert. They stay in, they're quiet. They, they're, you know, you, you don't hear a whole lot from them, but they are there. They have their own uniqueness. So we want to talk about that today. Now I have, as a licensed uh, professional counselor, I have some terms that I want to share with you about personality. Uh, it's been, the personality has been there for centuries, right? But now we put a name to it. That's the only difference. There's nothing new under the sun. We just know what to call it now. So I'm going to deal with that in, in terms of personality in the Bible. Um, some characters in the Bible that had some particular personalities. If you think off the top of your head right now, you would think of uh, David, you would think of Peter, you would think of Paul, you, you would just know right off the bat their personality. So the first one we're going to talk about this morning is called borderline personality disorder, borderline, borderline. You're not quite gone and you're not quite here. You just kind of borderline. You're in state, you're, you're, you have instability, kind of unstable in your personality. You, you kind of up and down, you, you, you kind of fluctuate a lot. You feel good and then you drop. You, you, you're okay and then you're not. You, you're talking good and wonderful and all of a sudden, totally just negative. Um, and that's, it's, it's an uncomfortable place to be in. People don't know how to handle someone who's borderline. Um, they, they're excited. They want to give gifts. They want to do wonderful things for people. And then they just drop off. It just, you, you have heard from them. I've really seen them. I've talked to them much. That's borderline personality. It's a disorder. Now, our normal functioning um, is 
you know, where we we are conscious of ourselves. We we know how to keep personal hygiene. We know how to conduct ourselves in public or in private. We we kind of have a normal function, but this person is borderline can't control their emotions well. And so this one, a lot of times couples with something called bipolar disorder, they're different. Bipolar disorder is where you have extreme high, extreme low. Now, bipolar is not a personality disorder. It's a mental illness. It requires treatment and medication. It requires a higher level of therapy, but it can cause borderline personality. So what am I saying? If you're dealing with bipolar disorder, which is not personality, that's mental. That's that's there's a disconnect in the brain. If you're dealing with that and you have a psychiatrist and you are getting therapy and medication, it's because it's affecting your personality. It makes you act strange. It makes you go up and then drop. It makes you where you're super excited, like I said before, and then you go almost into a complete catatonic state. You're just you almost go into a dark room and, and curl up in a ball and 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 just hide out. You know you can't be around people, and it's it's something that's it can't be controlled uh, just by you alone. You need help, and that's why the word of God is here. The blood of Jesus covers. He is the healer. He is the deliverer. He can deliver you from anything. Nothing is impossible. For God, God can do that. Yet there are those times when you would think he might give a miracle and completely wipe it out of a person's life. Sometimes a person can have an attitude of disobedience. They don't want to take their medicine. They don't want to go to the doctor. They don't want to act properly to do the things that help them. So God may not give you the miracle to heal you completely. He may want you to learn how to be obedient. So he may allow you to take the medicine and pray. Go to the doctor and pray. If there's something in your life that just it hasn't gone, it just won't move, it won't, he's trying to use it to train you to trust him and obey him and function with it. Because it can be a testimony to others of God's great. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. And just know that in Proverbs 11 and 14, it says where there's no counsel, the people, they, 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 they fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. When God brings counseling and preaching and prayer and medicine and the doctor into your life. Submit to those things. God is using them to help you. If you get rebellious and you don't want to take your medicine and you don't feel like going to the doctor, you're hurting yourself and others. If you have borderline personality coupled with bipolar disorder, extreme high, extreme low, you need treatment and medication and prayer. So you need to couple all that together in obedience as a vow to the Lord that you're going to do everything you need to do to keep yourself up. If God doesn't choose to work a miracle and take it out of your life, then he's saying, I want you to follow all instructions and be obedient. And God can deliver you in recovery. There's a miracle. And then there's recovery. Some things God will do instantaneously. Others, he wants you to walk through it, walk through it, walk through it, obey, take the medicine, 
go to the doctor, do what the doctor says. He made the doctor too. He made the medicine, he made the counselor, he made the therapy, he made the doctor. Obey all of these. He made the preacher, he made the word of God. Follow all of these. Yes, it's work, but if you're feeling worth it, if you love yourself enough to want to live and function, then obey what God has put in path. He doesn't always do a miracle. It's his sovereign will if he does. But if he doesn't, his mercy has put things in the earth for us to use and to um, become a benefit for us. So don't be angry and hurt and discouraged because God doesn't take it away. Turn that thing into a testimony. Work with all that God's given you and function. And then you can tell people, yes, God is helping me through this medication, through this doctor, through whatever means he has given to bring you life, to bring you strength. So in the word of God, we have an example of somebody who had that I call split uh, uh, in their personality. It's not, yeah, I'm not talking about you, you that two or three personalities. No, I'm not talking about that. That's a totally different study. But you kind of you kind of off. You're not where you should be. Judas. Judas walked with Jesus. Judas was there in the camp. He 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 was there with him. And at the same time, while he's walking with Jesus, and he was the treasurer, he kept the money. He took care of what God uh, or what Jesus at that time was, was doing in his ministry. Judas was right there eating at the table, yet contemplating in his mind, doubt, fear, unbelief. He was split so much and so until he secretly went and did a betrayal with money with the Jewish leaders so that they could capture Jesus and do what they wanted to do with him. Judas was split. He was in church. He was right there with Jesus. Yet he was dealing with this borderline split. Now, an even deeper study on that, and if you want to read about that, that's St. John 18, 1 through 6. I'm not going to read it, but I just want to give you that scripture. St. John 18, one through six talks about Judas and his betrayal. So you can be in church, but need a whole lot of help. Let God help you. He wants to deliver you. That bipolar that I talked about, King Saul, <laughs> he was bipolar. He, he had problems. Because he was so disobedient to God, the spirit of God left him and it opened him up for the devil to take over. And the devil did take over. And there were times when he was the king and celebratory and, and blessing the people. He was, he was doing the will of the Lord and then he would drop and just go completely evil. He was bipolar. He was extreme high, extreme low. He went after David because after the uh, battle or his victory at uh, Amalek, excuse me, Amalek, um, when they came back, the women were singing and dancing with their tambourines that Saul has killed his thousands, but David is ten thousands. And that spirit woke up. It was a trigger. For Saul, it woke up, and from that point on, he was trying to kill David. David would come and would play his instrument and would, um, you know, in lift his spirit. He would play his instrument for Saul, and it would calm him down. Worship will calm you. You get in the presence of God, and you get in worship, it can calm you. But even in that. Saul, that spirit got triggered. He got, he went bipolar and threw a javelin trying to kill David. 
he had a sick mind because the, the devil had come in. Evil had come in. It's the same today. There are people suffering in that same way, and they need help. And God is merciful to bring the counselors, the medicine, the treatment, and the doctors to help them with that. God wants us free. He wants us blessed. He wants us at peace. He doesn't want us to be sick and to suffer um, in ways that we don't have to. Now, some things you can't help. Some things you can't do anything about. But there are other things that, yes, God can help you be conscious enough to go after what will help you. And prayer, again, prayer and the power of God can deliver anybody, anything that God wants to do because he's sovereign. This is the borderline slash bipolar disorder. Borderline messes with your personality, how you act, how you think, how you uh, carry yourself. Bipolar is a mental brain disconnect. If the two of those get together, a whole lot of help is needed. That's okay. God is able and he can do exceedingly abundantly of all that we can ask or think. God bless you. I really have enjoyed so far. And I know you the time just gets to going quick, but this is what he wants us to know. He wants us to understand his will and his word. Let's take a look at one more on this in this area of borderline because it's 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 explaining so much in God's word about this particular illness and it also disturbs relationships you have trouble keeping a relationship you you, you scare people off you, you don't you stress them out you don't know they don't know how to handle your illness what you're going through especially if you don't take your medication or your treatment if you just kind of you know whatever flip it don't really want to do what you should be doing you can cause problems for other people so anything that happens with us can affect other people it's never just us whatever you go through and you're dealing with it's never just you by yourself it's going to affect your family, your church. It's going to affect the people that love you, the people that are around you. So do what you need to do to help yourself uh, so that others can be blessed and others can see God working in your life. Uh, a lot of times, God can't take us any further because we won't obey what we've got right in front of us. He wants us to pay attention, close attention and submit to what we've been given so that he can bless us further. And if you submit to God and you do what he says and you use what's put before you, God can bring recovery. He can bring deliverance. And one day you can testify. Look at what the Lord has done for me. Change he brought in my life. Let's look at St. John, the fourth chapter. And the 17th verse, 17 and 18. And this talks about the woman at the well. And you would wonder, what does that have to do with borderline personality? A lot. And the scripture for that, again, St. John uh, 4 and 17. And that one uh, explains Jesus' encounter with her. And it reads, And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that sayest thou all right, this woman had five husbands. That's a relational problem because she just, something went wrong with each one. Now, I've always heard it said that if it happens once, it's them. 
if it happens twice, is you. Now, that may be true, that may not be, but bipolar and borderline, and we want to go back to borderline mainly, where you just kind of, bipolar is extreme, high, extreme, low. Borderline is you're kind of here in the middle, kind of vacillating. You know, you're not quite the extreme, but if the two couple together, you need help. So she had five husbands. The one she was with wasn't hers, meaning that you can't get along well in relationships. When you've gone into six and seven husbands or wives, there's a problem. So it's not always them. And there's some things that need to be changed in your personality. Something is throwing things off with you can't keep a relationship strong enough. You you can't, I'm not talking about if you've gone through a divorce or you have, you know, gone through one relationship or another that you met someone and it didn't quite work out. I'm not talking about that. That's just more on a little bit more normal scale. We're talking six and seven husbands, uh, you're moving all over the country, you're here, you're there, you're everywhere. You know, it, that's borderline. You, you you can't stabilize. You're not, you're unstable in it. And the Bible says any man that's unstable, you know, uh, the Lord can't work with you. He can't bless you. Um, he can't help a double-minded, double-minded. That's, that's that borderline, that's that split. And the Lord wants that to be dealt with. You can't just say, well, you know, I don't care what people think. I'm going to do what I want to do. No, it's affecting. She, she had five husbands and it affected every one of those families of those five husbands. Now, I'm not saying that the five husbands were perfect, but count it. One woman, five husbands. There's a common denominator there. It was the woman at the well. So we are always to check ourselves to see where we are with God, to see where we are spiritually, naturally, even mentally, because we want to stay in the ark of safety. We want to stay in the place where God can speak to us, where we were lining up with his word. We're not grieving the Holy Spirit. We want to make sure that we're walking up right before the Lord. And we all get off it, you know, at times. Grief can come and throw you off kilter. Um, you know, you can go through a divorce and you you take a while to recuperate from that. Those are all normal, you know, functions that you deal with within grief or whatever is happening. But in this borderline personality coupled with bipolar, you need help. And you can't just go it alone. And it doesn't mean that God is not powerful. It means that God wants you to get in line and to walk with what he's doing because he chooses how we heal. He chooses how we change. He gave the personality. Now, he didn't. He took away sin, but we can still be affected by maladjustments in our birth defects, different things we may have suffered with, we need to cry out to God. And God is able, but we also need to obey him as we seek him. Obey him as we seek him. Obey the instructions. And this is paramount. This is very important because we have a lot of people walking the streets who are suffering from these illnesses and people just, you know, write them off as crazy, insane, and, you know, they got problems and won't help. But that's why the agencies are there. Rehabilitation is there. Um, outpatient, inpatient, everything has been put there by the mercy of God for us to get the help. And so I want to encourage you, if you feel that you're suffering with this, go to a doctor. Get checked. He gives the medication. Take the medication. Pray over the medication. Stand on the word of God. Bring deliverance. But obey. Don't come off that medicine unless the doctor tells you to. And he will confirm it. And you can worship God because 
you not only got free from that, you obeyed the Lord. When we obey him, we can eat the good of the land. God bless you for this time. We'll meet again next week talking about personalities and uh, whatever the Lord has told you to do. Please obey him. God bless you. We'll see you next week. I'm get ready to begin. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. Bless his name. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. Bless, bless his name. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. Bless his name. My soul loves Jesus. My soul. Love Jesus, my soul. Love Jesus, bless, bless his name. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, glory to your name, Jesus. Yes, yes, hallelujah. Yes, yes, my soul says yes. My soul says yes. My soul says yes. Go back. My soul says yes. My soul says yes. Oh, my soul says yes. Yes. Ah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Nehashako. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, bless your holy name. Hey, wonderful Savior. Hallelujah. How we praise you. How we worship you, God. How we magnify you today. Hallelujah. Your name is great greatly to be praised we thank you lord hallelujah thank you oh god you brought us into this new year thank you lord thank you hallelujah glory to your name is because of your mercy because of your grace god your loving kindness hallelujah thank you lord thank you you didn't have to do it god but you did and we're so grateful so thankful hallelujah 
Thank you, Lord. 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 Just giving you praise this morning. Worshiping your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hey, wonderful Savior, we've been kept by your power, kept by your grace, God. Hallelujah. Hey, thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost and power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God, we praise you today. Day of thanksgiving, a day of rejoicing. Hallelujah. Giving you glory and honor and praise today. God, you're just so worthy. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy of glory. God, you are so worthy. Hallelujah. Worthy art thou, O God, our strength. Hallelujah. Our Redeemer. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. We just worship your holy name. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. Spirit and in truth today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this great salvation, God. You've given us this great salvation through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, O oh God, You've given us a mind to serve you, will to obey you. Thank you for the mind, God. Thank you for the mind. Thank you for the mind. Hallelujah. Thank you for the mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the mind to serve you. Thank you, you work in us, the willing to do of your good pleasure. Hey, wonderful Savior, hallelujah. Hey, God, it's in you that we live and move and have our being. Hallelujah, it's in you, Lord. Our strength is in you, God. Our healing is in you, God. Our deliverance is in you, God. Hallelujah, hey, your name is a strong tower, hallelujah. We can run in it in our safe today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You blessed our going out and our coming in. Hallelujah. You kept us from the wicked one. Hallelujah. Thank you. You kept us from the wicked one. Thank you, Hashatahoba. You came that we might have life and that more abundantly. Thank you for abundant life today. Thank you for abundant life today. Thank you for abundant life today. Oh, bless your holy name. 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 Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your name is holy. Hallelujah. Your name is holy. Hallelujah. Hey. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Your mercy endureth forever. And your grace is sufficient. Ha-ya-ha-ha. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Your grace is sufficient. Yee! And you take us from grace to grace, from strength to strength, from glory to glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. From faith to faith. Hallelujah. Yeah, as we walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. Oh, wonderful King of glory. Hallelujah. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Hallelujah. You're the king of glory today. Hallelujah. We ask, Lord, that you would just move in behalf of your people here. Your little ones here, oh God. Oh God, have your way, Lord. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Here we are in your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Work within us. Let your glory be revealed, God. Let your glory be revealed. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Savior, Savior. Savior, Savior. Move in behalf of your people here. In the name of Jesus. To heal, Lord. To deliver. Whatever we need, God. It's in you. Hallelujah. It's in your presence. Hallelujah. In your presence is the fullness of joy. Rain on us today, God. Shower your anointing on your people here. A fresh ahasataha. A fresh anointing, God. A fresh anointing, God. From your presence today. 
Hallelujah. Rest that I should do. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. 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 My soul says yes. My soul says yes. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your holy name. Bless your holy name. Oh, God. You bless, you strengthen, you heal. As only you can, God. You can do anything but fail. There's no failure in you. There's no lack in you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name today. Bless your holy name today. Look on those that are here, those that are listening. Oh, God. Lord, anoint our heads with oil. Let our cups run over. You shower of your anointing in our soul today. Hallelujah. Use us for your glory, Lord. For your name's sake, oh God. Be here with us today. Saints everywhere, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Move by your power, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Touch while we wait on you, Lord. While we tarry at the altar, God. In the name of Jesus. Fill us with all the fullness of Christ today. Hallelujah. Let no flesh glory in your presence here. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Haya. Bless your holy name today. Bless your holy name today. Bless your holy name today. Oh, God. You're able today. And we believe you by faith, Lord. Hallelujah. We hear said a haya. We stand on your word today. Your word is settled in heaven. Hallelujah. Your word will never fall to the ground. Hallelujah. Oh, you sent your word to heal. You sent your word to heal. To heal the mind, to heal the heart, to heal the body. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Encourage these, your people here. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We'll give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And we thank you, Lord, for bringing us into this new year. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for last year. You said in everything to give you thanks. In everything. We thank you for last year. And we thank you for this year. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, bless your name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, you that are here and you that are wherever you are, come on and bless the Lord and give God praise today. If God has done something for you that you could not have done for yourself, you ought to praise him. The redeemed of the Lord ought to say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. God, you redeemed us out of the hand of the enemy. Hey, glory to God. Glory. Glory to God. Open your mouth and just say glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless your holy name today. Hallelujah. We praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we give you glory in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen and amen. Come on, give God some praise today. Come on, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. You ought to open your mouth and say something to God. Hallelujah. 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 Tell him hallelujah. Tell him hallelujah. Tell him hallelujah. Ooh, bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may have your seat in the presence of the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I love you, I love you, I love you. Love you, I love you, I love you. Love you, I love you, I love you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Help me sing it. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Praise you, praise you, praise you. Praise you, praise you, praise you. Praise you, praise you, praise you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Help me sing it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You that are listening. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 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 Come on, clap your hands and bless him. Hallelujah. If God has done something for you, you could not have done for yourself. You ought to give him some praise today. I know he blessed you to, and brought you into this new year. That, you ought to give him glory for that. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, you that are here, you that are listening, come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus today. Oh, bless his name. Surely God is good. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. He's good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And we thank him today. We worship his holy name. We magnify him for his goodness. He's a great God and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. He looked on us and showered his love on us and his grace and his mercy and allowed us another opportunity to come into the house of the Lord or to tune in in fellowship with the saints. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Not because of our greatness, it's because of his mercy that we're not consumed. Thank you, Lord. We're here by the grace of God. And we thank him how he just blessed us and helped us to step into a new time, a new year. New expectations from him. He's been good to us. And we praise him. And then, you know, we thank him for last year. Because in everything, we give him thanks. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Had a hard time, but you were right there with me. Yee-haw-ya. Hey, bless Allah, You were right there. Hallelujah. Never left me nor forsake me. With me always. Even till the end of the world. That's his promise to us. He be with us always. Even till the end of the world. So we rejoice in the Lord and thank God for Jesus. Thank God for you. Amen. For the saints of the Lord. Those that are here to see you again. Amen. 
see you in this new year. Those that are listening, God bless you. Thank God for you that the Lord has brought you to this time. And we're rejoicing in the Lord. Our strength is in him, saints. We can't make it without the Lord. We need him every step of the way. So we thank God for you, you, and even you. We want to continue to pray for all of those that have requested prayer. You know, prayer is, is the first thing. Paul said, first of all, prayer. And then Jesus said, men ought to always pray. And if Jesus says something, you better believe it and you better listen to it. If our Savior said men ought to always pray, we need to find ourselves always praying. And prayer, supplication, intercession, the giving of thanks be made for all men. As we pray that the Lord move in our behalf, we're praying for one another. And we're seeing God work. We're watching God work. Even in the midst of everything that's happening, God is yet working by his power. And we thank God. Well, you know, I, he's working by his power. We're still here. You ought to give him praise for that. You ought to thank him. You're still here. You're still here. Amen. So God is good. And we're a winner either, either way. We're a winner. We're a winner in the name of the Lord. So we thank God for you. And again, we're praying that the Lord will strengthen you and encourage you. Every now and then, you need a fresh air, breath of fresh air. Amen. Once you get a breath of fresh air, you feel like running some more. Hallelujah. Hey, bless the name of God. And what God does is by the Holy Ghost, he, he breathes on us and refreshes us. And we feel like running on even further. Amen. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. He's our keeper, company keeper. And he's our strength. Hallelujah. And he's our prayer warrior. Because we don't know what we ought to pray. But the Holy Ghost will pick up for us. I wonder do you hear me. And when you say oh God. That means a whole language to God. Hallelujah. So I'm glad for the Lord. I'm happy for Jesus. I'm glad to be saved. How about you? I'm not. I, I don't feel like. Backing, you know, going up against the fist, fence, bucking to see where I can get what I can get away from. I'm glad to know the Lord. Amen. I'm on my I'm on my way to heaven and I'm enjoying the trip. I want to do you hear me? All of this in heaven too. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And when the presence of the Lord comes upon us and we feel his anointing, that's just a taste of how it's going to be throughout all eternity. So we rejoice in him this morning and thank God for you that the Lord is blessing and sustaining you and strengthening you. You know, we're not grumbling or complaining. We're walking by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. Every round goes higher and higher. Hallelujah. And so we thank God for Jesus. We want you to go to the word of the Lord on this morning. Just pray that something will be said to encourage you in the way of the Lord. We're going to be looking in the first. I want you to go. We'll be in 2 Kings, the 20th chapter. We'll read some verses there. And also Isaiah, the 38th chapter. And in... Uh, 2 Kings, the 20th chapter, 5th and 6th verse says, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thee 15 years and will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my name's sake and for my servant David's sake. Down to the ninth verse, and Isaiah said, This sign shall thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing that he hath spoken, 
shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or go back 10 degrees? And Hezekiah answered, it is a light thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees, nay, but let the shadow return back 10 degrees. And Isaiah, the prophet, cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backwards by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. And then in uh, Isaiah, the 38th chapter, and I want you to go down to the 19th verse, starting at the 19th verse. Isaiah, 38th chapter, starting at the 19th verse. The living, the living, he saith, praise thee as I do this day. The father to the children shall make known thy truth. The Lord was ready to save me. Therefore will I sing my song to the string instruments all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. Can we say praise the Lord? And we're looking at God can turn it around. God can turn it around. God can turn it around. And we're looking beyond the circumstances and the chaos that we have seen on this past year. We're looking to the God of our salvation. Our hope and our confidence is in the God of all flesh because there's nothing too hard for him. And although the report seemed bleak and the diagnosis grim, we know that God can turn it around. This is the expectation and confidence that we have in our God. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Here we see King Hezekiah, king of Judah. And he had been a king who honored the one true God. So we would call him a good king. He removed the high places that were in Judah, 2 Kings 18 and 4. He destroyed the sacred pillars or the wood, wooden images that were raised up for false gods in 2 Kings 18 4. And he destroyed the idols that were used to worship Baal and Ashtoreth. He broke the Nehestin. And that was the bronze serpent that had been made by Moses in the wilderness because Judah had, been, had begun to worship it as an idol. And because he did that, he was a king that trusted in the Lord, in the God of Israel. For he held fast to the Lord. And he did not depart from following the Lord. He kept the commandments of God. Second Kings, we see, 18, 5, and 6. But we come to a crisis in his life. We come to a circumstance beyond his control. The word of the Lord says, however, in the days was Hezekiah sick unto death? 2 Kings 21. And then all of a sudden, God sends the prophet to him to say, get your house in order, for you're going to soon die. The crisis in the life of Hezekiah, his, his, his terminal condition, he's sick unto death. And so therefore, the prophet of God, an authentic prophet of God, not a lying prophet, but a prophet used by God, comes and says to him to get your affairs in order. 
meaning that death was around the corner. And then on top of that, he has the problem of dealing with the constant attacks of the Assyrians, and the Assyrians had already captured the northern kingdom of Israel in 2 Kings, the 17th chapter. And so, by right, they felt as though they could come in and destroy Judah and take them captive. So not only is his crisis physical, it's also situations that he has to deal with. And you know how it is to be sick and then have a lot of other problems going on. This was the crisis in the life of King Hezekiah. But notice this. He, the Bible lets us know that he cried unto the Lord. So we see Hezekiah's cry and then the remarkable comeback that God gives him. The Bible lets us know that Hezekiah made up an appeal to God. He went to the one who had spoken that death was coming. And he went in fervent prayer to God. He was serious about it. It wasn't a joke. It wasn't something he was doing out of a ritual. He needed God to move in his behalf. And really we ought to look at that as we see today. Our prayer is to be sincere and fervent because we've got trouble all around us. Some, some people are dealing with not only the crisis of family or the crisis that is of economic situation, but they've got their own physical health that they're dealing with in the midst of everything, and it's time to turn it to God and see what God has to say about it. Hezekiah makes an appeal to God. Notice now, this is amazing to me, because the prophet of God, who he knows to be an authentic prophet of God, comes to him and tells him that get your things in order, you're going to die, but that doesn't stop him from making his appeal to God. The Bible says, to let you know how fervent he was, he turned his face to the wall and pray. Meaning that he wanted to, 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 to conversate with God himself. Similar to Hannah when she came to the tabernacle and she was crying out to God and, and her mouth was moving but nothing was coming out. She was desperate and wanted God to move in her behalf, so is Hezekiah appealing to God. He wants God to turn this thing around for him. God is able to turn it around, saints. And what does he do? And, and, and he does not necessarily ask God to heal him in his prayer, but what he does, he rehearses his loyalty to God. He's not holding up any self-righteousness to God, but he's saying, in the midst of what's been going on, God, I've walked before you in truth. I have walked before you in truth. As I said before, he's not arrogantly holding up to God his righteousness, but he's saying, God, because I love you so, I've done what's right. Notice, he recognizes my heart was loyal to you. Understand this, in the kingdom of Judah, there were kings who obeyed God and kings that disobeyed God. In his lineage, he knew of the kings that had disrespected the word of God and had caused Israel to turn away from God, but he had a heart that was after God. He recognized the fact that my help and my hope is in the Lord. And so when you read, when Hezekiah becomes king, he's going after God. And not only is he going after God, he's causing all Israel to go after God. And that is why we need to watch our influence. We need to live this thing because we don't know who we're influencing. We need to be sincere and loyal to God, not just when people see us, but we ought to be loyal to God when can't nobody see us. We ought to live so God can use us anywhere and anyhow. 
So he's walking before uh, the Lord in truth. And, and then my heart was loyal to you, loyal to you, no other, hallelujah. And one thing you need to understand is, hallelujah, when you look at Abraham and when you look at David and all of those, there were things they did that God wasn't pleased with, but they never turned away from the true God. Their hearts never were pulled away to idolatry. They never turned away from knowing who the true God. God had to deal with them. God had to chasten them because he chastens whom he loves. Thank God for the chastening. You ought to thank God that you belong to him. Thank you, Lord, if you got to whoop me back in line, do it, God. Because you love me. Are you listening to me today? And so notice he says, God, I've, I've, I've been loyal to you. I've done what you asked me to do. What you moved in my heart. He was king. He could have did whatever he wanted to do. But he had a heart loyal to God. And then notice, my actions, uh, hey, glory to God, were to do what is right in your sight. So my actions. See, I, I didn't just talk about it, but my actions. Show forth my heart for you. Notice, has Hezekiah asked God to remember him. If you look at the passage of scripture, he says to remember, oh God. Remember God. That, that's all we want. That's all we want God to do. We're not holding up our greatness. But God, just remember that I love you. Remember, God, how, how I'm concerned about what you're concerned. Just remember. That's the same uh, cry that Nehemiah had. He would say to God, God, remember me for good. And that's also the same cry, hallelujah, that the thief on the cross had. He said, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. Lord, just remember me. While I'm in this crisis and the devil trying to take me under, remember me. While the enemy is, 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 is causing havoc and coming against me physically and coming against me emotionally and coming against me financially and coming against me in, in, in socially and all of these things, Lord, just remember me. Hallelujah. And, and you know what, Hezekiah knew that God was willing to hear his appeal. That's what I want you to see. That's why we ought to pray. And, and somebody say, well, uh, see, you get in situations and then you say, well, I'm not going to pray. No, the devil is a lie. You pray over everything. If you're upset about something, pray. If you don't understand something, pray. Just go to God and talk to him. See, God is our father. And if we're hurt, we ought to express it to God. God, I'm hurt about this. Oh, y'all are good. Lord, help me today. God, I'm upset about this. God, I, I don't like to see somebody, you know, see, God is our father. As a matter of fact, through the Holy Ghost, he's our daddy because, because a, a, a Roman said you could call him Abba Father. That, that's a closeness. That's, that's where you got a father. You know, I've got children, and some of them will just come and lean on me. Oh, y'all, I'll be sitting down or something. They just come and lean on me. I say, why are you leaning on me? Because you my daddy. Oh, y'all, they with me here. Yeah, hey, I'm here to tell you, my dears and sons, we can lean heavy on the Lord. We belong to him and he belongs to us. And you can go to him no matter what. That, that's why you ought to read the Psalms. Because in the Psalms, David expresses a whole uh, vastness of emotions. When the enemy comes against him, he says, God, kill him. Destroy him. But then, as he's talking to God, God works it out of his spirit where he says, I'm going to bless you, God. He said, I would have fainted. Had I not seen the goodness of the Lord hey, in the land of the living, I'm here to tell you, saints, on this past year, we would have fainted unless we had seen the goodness of the Lord. That's why I'm telling you, God is a good God. Lord, help me if you please. Hey, glory to God. He's willing to hear his appeal. So Hezekiah has confidence, hey, glory to God, his confidence was complete in God. 
completely in who God is. His confidence is knowing that I can talk to the Lord and he will hear me. Now notice this, notice this, oh my dears and sirs, because we, when you go to the New Testament and you see when Paul is talking to God about removing an infirmity, hey glory to God, God says my grace is sufficient. So you know what, that's why we ought to talk to God, because you don't know what your circumstance is. Here we see a circumstance where death is imminent upon him and he appeals to God and God turns it around. But in, in, in Paul, we see God is saying, I'm going to turn it around because my grace is sufficient. Are you listening to me? I wish I was making some sense today, but hey, glory to God. Notice that God, now notice, I'm, I'm moving quickly here. God received Hezekiah's appeal. Because, and now notice, he cries out to God, he hears what God has said because he's sick. His, he's sick, and then here comes the prophet because what would they would usually have, the prophet would come and tell them if they were going to recover if they didn't. Here comes the prophet said, you know, you better get your house in order, you know, you better make sure your will is straight and all of that kind of stuff, make sure your insurance is paid. You know, somebody start talking to you like that. You in the hospital, they start saying, do you have all your stuff in order? Yeah, your eyes get big then. Because wait a minute, what's going on? And the same way emotionally was in Hezekiah. But you know what? He doesn't get desperate. He doesn't get out of sort. He doesn't act like he don't know what to do. You know what he do? does? He goes to God. See, saints, the old saints taught us, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. I'm going to tell you, our relationship ought to be so with God that when trouble comes, we just call on him. How are you listening today? And so what do we see here? Hallelujah. He makes his appeal to God, and, and God hears his appeal. And right in the middle of the court, in 2 Kings 20 and 4, God speaks to Isaiah and tells him to go back and tell Hezekiah that I have answered his prayer. And Hezekiah turns around, goes back, uh, Isaiah rather turns around, goes back to Hezekiah and lets him know that God has heard your prayers and he has seen your tears. That's what I'm trying to encourage you. God is hearing your prayers. It may seem as though things are not changing, but God is listening to you. He sees the tears. He, he sees the longing in your heart. That's why you just need to have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your problem. He'll hear your fainted cry. He'll answer by and by. See, I, I'm finding this out more and more. See, God is in eternity. And there's no time frame in eternity. But we that are earthen vessels are in time. So if God says something now, we don't know how long it's going to take place in our time. Oh, y'all ain't with me. What I'm saying is we're saying, God, save my children. But you don't know how long that time frame is. But I'm here to tell you, just keep praying and holding on to God because God is turning it around. Let me finish this up here. Hallelujah. He said, I heard your prayer. And I've seen your tears. And notice this. He said, I will heal thee. I'm going to heal you. He tells him, I will, through the prophet, he says, I will heal thee. And then in three days, you're going to be able to go to the house of the Lord. And then he says, and as a matter of fact, God has let you know, I'm going to add 15 more years to your life. Isn't that something about God? He says to him, I'm going to heal you, and then you're going to be able to go back to the house of God and give me praise for it. And I'm going to add, that's why my, my dears and sirs, you that are sitting there right now is the house of God in your house. 
as you're listening in you, you're with us in the power of the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is there with you as well as he's here with us. And you ought to be giving God praise for what he's already done. When you stepped over into 2021, you should have, if you couldn't shout, you should have lifted up your legs and told God thank you. If you couldn't get up and run, you ought to lift it up your hands and say, God, I thank you. I know it's not all in, 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 in the energetics and, and being demonstrative, but I'm here to tell you that when they get ready, when the Bears get ready to play the Green Bay Packers later on today, and if those Bears start scoring on the Green Bay Packers, folk going to be yelling and screaming and hollering. They're going to be running and, and bumping one another and doing everything. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, something down in the depths of my soul cries out hallelujah thank God for saving me something on the inside ought to be bubbling over in you saying God I just want to praise you because you're able to turn it around let me move on here God declares that he would not only would he heal Hezekiah, but he is going to deliver him from his adversaries, the Assyrians. He says here, uh -huh, I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. Notice what he's saying here is that not only am I going to heal your body, but I'm going to rectify the problem that you're going through. I'm going to change the condition that's happening around you. The enemy's trying to bring you down and defeat you. And I'm here to tell you the devil is out to steal, kill, and destroy. And it's been the devil trying to wear you down and, and delete you and defeat you. Hallelujah. And tear you down and deplenish your faith. But I'm here to tell you that God is able to turn your condition around. God is working for your good. And he's able to change conditions in your body and soul and spirit. And that's why the believer ought to lift up our heads which hang down. And strengthen our feeble knees. And we ought to give God glory. And give God honor. Can you say yes, Lord? He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Notice this, the king of Assyria, he shall not come into the city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come, hallelujah, before you, hallelujah, it were with shield, nor cast a bank against it. But by, by the way that he came, by the same shall he return and shall not come into this city, saith the Lord. What the Lord was telling you, the enemy's not coming in this city, and the way he came, I'm going to send him back the same way. And what God is telling you, that the enemy is not going to take you down. What the devil tried to do was drown you. But God made you a boat in the middle of the storm. And you floated on to the shore. To the shore of 2020. And you ought to be on the shore giving him praise and magnifying his name the devil thought he had you but God made a way of escape and brought you to victory can you say yes Lord you have the victory in Jesus Christ tell the Lord thank you I've got to close here but notice this he confirmed God confirms his word to Hezekiah because, uh, hey, glory to God, Isaiah says to him, what do you want? And he says to him, listen here, I want you, hallelujah, the shadow of the sundown, which has gone down with the sun on the sundown of Hezekiah. What he wanted him to do was turn the shadow 10 degrees back. 
to give him confirmation. But you see, he needed, because of the dispensation that he was in, he needed to see a physical confirmation. But we in the Holy Ghost, uh, see the Holy Ghost is our confirmation. The Holy Ghost lets us know uh, that yea, in all of these things, we're more than a comfort. Uh, that the Holy Ghost lets us know uh, that God is bringing us out victorious. Uh, even the youth shall faint and grow weary and the young men shall utterly fall but they that wait on the Lord I said they that wait on the Lord see I'm waiting I'm waiting on the Lord because I know he's able somebody ought to say he's able he's able to turn it around for me he's able hey he's able to bring me out all right. And God had promised his deliverance. This was a confirmation that God would heal him. And he did just what he said. And that's what I'm trying to encourage you. God is going to do just what he said. You've got 66 books. And glory to God to know and give you confirmation that the same God that drowned the army of the Egyptians in the Red Sea, the same God that brought down the Jericho wall, the same God that brought, oh bless his name, Daniel out of the lion's den, the same God that spoke to Hezekiah and told him, thou shalt live and not die. Ebio Shataha is the same God. Somebody help me say same God. Somebody help me say same God. He's the same God that's speaking to you right now. That's letting you know I'm coming out and I'm coming out with my hands up. Hey, glory to God. I'm coming out with a greater praise. I'm coming out with a deeper hallelujah. I'm coming out with a glory to God. Say yeah. Say yes. Oh, yes. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Can you declare in 2020? I'm coming out with my hands up. I'm coming out with my mind healed. I'm coming out with my body healed. I'm coming out with my family saved. I'm coming out. Say yeah. Lord, have mercy here. Good God from Zion. Hey, glory to God. Let me close this thing. Notice God gives him a prescription. Yes, Lord. He told him to make a paste out of figs and put it on the boil. See, when God delivers you, he gives you everything you need to bring you out. Sometimes God, in a physical condition that we have, as you pray and talk to God, God will say, now, don't do this. Oh, y'all ain't with me here. Or, or stop doing that. Or, or get this or get that. I, I know for a fact that there was a member of this church and we had a shut in. I know some of y'all know I'm telling the truth. And she said God told her what to do to deliver her from diabetes. He said, she said God told her that right in there. And said if you do this and keep doing it, God will deliver you. I'm here to tell you God will give you the victory. And speak to your heart on what to do. Now it's up to you to do it. You see, don't, don't tell God to heal you of blood pressure. And you go out and get something that's salty. And eat it all up. And then want the saints to pray to get your blood pressure down. Y'all ain't with me here. I know I lost you on that. If God, if you want God to heal your blood pressure. We then that are workers together with God. I want him to heal me. So I'm going to do the things I'm supposed to do. 
Y'all ain't with me here. I'm going to do what I need to do uh, in order to get my blood pressure down. And not only I'm going to do those things, uh, but I'm going to stay with what he told me to do. And that's why I'm telling you, can I take a spiritual note? Uh, God has healed you and delivered you from sin. He's given you the prescription to stay healed and to stay delivered and to stay set free. Don't veer back. Don't go back. Don't go doing the old thing. Stay with God. He'll lead you all the way. He brought you out. He delivered you. He set your heart free. So don't go back. I'm pressing on. The upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Paul said, I, ap I haven't apprehended, but this one thing I do, I'm shaking off the things in the past and I'm moving forward. I'm going forward. I'm going forward. Open your mouth and say, I'm going forward. I'm going forward. I'm not going back. I'm not turning back. I'm not looking back. I'm pressing ahead. Tell the Lord, thank you. I'm going on in the name of the Lord. I'm going on in the name of the Lord. Yeah. Tell the Lord, yeah. And I got to close. It's time for us to understand that even in the midst of what I'm going through, I need to give God praise. I need to thank him. Hezekiah celebrated God's healing and victory over his enemies. And I've got to close. But in Isaiah, the 38th chapter, the 9th through the 20th verse, we see Hezekiah recited his sickness. From verse 9 to 14, we see Hezekiah reveals his feelings about life and death in 15 and 18. But then we see Hezekiah, he promised to praise God as long as he lived. In 38, 19, and 20, the living, the living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. The father to the children shall make known thy truth. The Lord was ready to save me. Therefore will I sing my song. And glory to God to the string instruments. And all of my days all of my days all of the days of my life in the house of the lord i'm gonna give him glory i'm gonna magnify his name i come to church just to tell him thank you i came today to tell the lord thank you thank you for how you brought me thank you for how you healed me Thank you for how you kept me. Thank you. You kept my mind. Yes, you did. You kept my heart. Say yeah. Say yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some of us, we've been everywhere. We've had to be in the stores. We had to be in the gas station. We had to be here and there. But God spoke over us and said, Thou shalt live and not die. Glory to God. And do you think that I've come here 
just to have you look at me. The devil is a liar. I've come to give my God praise. I've come to tell him thank you. I've come through many dangers, toils and snares. I've already come. It was your grace. It was your grace. Oh, it was your grace. Shall glory, shall glory, shall glory. Hey, put your hand on yourself and say, I believe God is able to turn it around. Put your hand on yourself and say, I believe God. He's able to turn it around. 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 You don't have to. You don't have to touch nobody. You ain't got to look at nobody. But right where you are, I want you to give a symbol of knowing God is going to turn it around. I just want you right in your seat, right where you are. Get up on your feet and just turn around and say, God is. God is. God. Turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. He's turning it around. He's turning it around. Just worship him, 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 worship him. Come on and worship him, worship him. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Glory to God. Mm. Oh, he's turning it around. God's going to turn it around. God is going to turn it around. God is going to turn it around. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Don't stop praising him. Don't stop worshiping him. Don't stop giving him the glory. Regardless of what happens, regardless of what we see, don't stop giving him the glory. God is good no matter the crisis or condition. God is good in the innermost being. My soul says you're a great God and greatly to be praised. I see God working it out for me. I see God opening up doors for me. I see God turning it around for me. I see God making a way out of no way. I see God healing my body in spite of what the doctors say. I see God turning it around. Yes! And I'm going to give him glory and I'm going to magnify his name 
Come on and clap your hands and praise him. It's in the praise. 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 Your deliverance is in the praise oh it's in the praise help me sing it it's in the praise 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 your deliverance is in the praise Hallelujah. Woo! Ah! Woo! I hear God saying, if you don't have no joy, you ought to leap for joy. Woo! My God. Oh! Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. Only God can do it. 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 Do it, do it, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Only God can do it. Only God can do it. Only God can do it. Do it, do it, do it. Do it, do it, do it. All right, we're going to get out of here. Hallelujah. Oh, I don't want you to look at nobody or touch nobody, but right where you are, give them a little of this. Come on, get, come on, give them some praise. All right, let me close, let me close. When you leave here, you ought to have a pep in your step. You ought to have a pep in your step. Because I get up, I set up. God's going to turn it around. And we're going to pray right now. For you that are going through, believe God in your life. Ah, my God today. Thank you, Lord. I said, oh, 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 oh. Believe God today. Believe God. Believe God. God can do it for you right where you are. Believe him. Trust him. Say yes to him. If you're not saved, give up all and follow him. Say yes to his will. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Let him fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost and give you power and victory in your life. Father, right now, we thank you for your word. We receive it, God. We receive your word with gladness and singleness of heart. God, you're able. You're able. And we're praising you and magnifying you because we know you're able. Hallelujah. You're able to turn it around. Yeah, glory to God. You are able to turn it around. Hallelujah. And it's by faith that we can declare that you're able to turn it around. Move, continue to move in behalf of your people. In the Nehaya, who are calling on you out of a sincere heart that love you. Hallelujah, with all of their heart, their mind, and soul. Hey, God, stir them up by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord, put your hands on them. Hey, glory to God, and let them know, hallelujah, that you're with them always, even to the end of the world. Continue to strengthen, Lord. Continue to heal. Continue to give victory, and we'll praise you for it. And, and God, by faith, we're going to give you glory. We're going to give you honor because we count all things done in the name of Jesus. And we thank
thank you now for your presence. We thank you for your anointing that destroys every yoke. Hallelujah. And gives life and victory in the inner man. And we thank you now and give you praise in Jesus' name. Thank God. Come on, clap your hands and thank the Lord. You that are listening, come on and clap your hands and praise him. Come on and praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Most High God today. His name be glorified and honored and praised today. Hallelujah. As we worship him. As we worship him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is good, isn't he? God is good all the time. And we're going to praise him. Thanks. Saints, we're giving God glory for all of his goodness. And we're magnifying the God of our salvation. Through it all, God is leading us by his spirit. And we praise him for that. We thank God for all of you as God has brought us into this new year. A new time. Great expectations expecting God to move in behalf of his people and looking for the Lord to come back and gather his people. So we thank God for you that have joined us, you that have joined us by way of Facebook, by way of our YouTube page and also our web page. Thank God for you joining in in worship and celebration of the Lord Jesus Christ, who he is and what he is in our lives. We're going to prepare to receive communion on this morning. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much. We're going to prepare to receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as ha is done here. We have the sacrament already prepared and you should have received a Ziploc bag with the, the bread and the wine or bread and the fruit of the grape. And we're going to ask you at this time to prepare it so that we can receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank God for our missionary who does her due diligence to make certain that everything is safe for everyone to receive. Amen. So, my, my late grandmother, the late mother, Jenny Markham, used to always say this. She said, I'm so happy and I know just what to do. <laughs> so we're happy and we know just what to do. And so what we're going to do is to make certain that the saints are safe as they partake of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So with that in mind, we want you to prepare to receive. You that are listening... You that are tuning in with us, we're all the family together coming around the table to receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. These instruments are symbolic of his sacrifice for us. Jesus suffered without the gate. Thank you, Lord. He went through. He paid the penalty that we should have paid. He died in our place, in our stead. And then God honored the sacrifice of his own son when he raised him on the third day. He emptied the tomb. He, ah, 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 shut down. he is not here, but he has risen as he said. And we serve a savior that is on the right hand side of God our Father, making intercession for us. And for his gift sacrifice we come around the table. He said, do this in remembrance of me. Remember the Lord, what he has done for us. For I received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, and when you are prepared, all of those that are here, just stand to your feet. If you're ready, you just stand to your feet. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks and break it, he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Now, Father, we thank you for your blessings. Thank you for bringing us to this time. As we come to this table, we ask, Lord, that you would just have your way in our hearts. 
First of all, Lord, we look on the inside. And you told us to lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily beset us. And you work in us your righteousness. A heart that says yes to you. And then, Lord, we look around us, our brothers and sisters, as you teach us how to love one another, how to serve one another, how to build one another up. Continue to let that work in our hearts, oh God. That 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, let it be in our hearts and minds in the name of Jesus. And then we look up, God, for our help comes from you. And then we look ahead to the coming of our Savior. And we thank you and praise you. Now bless the fruit of the vine. Bless this bread. And bless your people as they receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. And he said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Eat ye all of it. Thank you, Jesus. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. He said, Drink ye all of it. For as often as ye drink this, eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show forth the Lord's death until he comes. Can we say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Now you, you should have received a Ziploc bag also, so put that in your Ziploc bag and you can take it and dispose it at your convenience. Amen. God bless you today. Oh, soon and very soon we are going to see the king. Oh, soon and very soon. We are going. Oh, soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to see the King. Can we say praise the Lord? Come on, clap your hands and thank God for Jesus. Now we're going to prepare as we have prepared and received the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And thank him for bringing us to this time. This is the first Sunday in the month of January of 2021. Thank God for Jesus. We weren't able to celebrate, but we pray that you were tuning in and celebrating with us on uh, Facebook and YouTube and all of that as we just celebrate the Lord and bringing us into this, this new year. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Thank the Lord. Um, we're going to prepare to receive the body. We're going to prepare to receive the offering. There you go. I'm going to get it, man. Receive the offering. And I thank God for you, my friends, who were able to give. The first offering that was raised on our New Year was missions offering. And many gave, and thank God for you giving. I want to thank God also for the brothers who were helping on a mission project. Thank you, brethren. You gave, and it's going to help tremendously. Not only are we going to be helped because a crisis happened in the nation of Chile is primarily among the Haitian refugees that are there. And we're going to be able to help them do what needs to be done in terms of homes and food and shelter, all of these things, to be a blessing there. But also, we were able to get a family from North Chicago that will be helped also. Young lady here in North Chicago that will be able to help her with her family. I have one of the missionaries who's making sure that's done uh, to assist and help. So we thank God. Amen? Thank God for what the Lord is doing. And so we, we, we're adding on to what has been given from the men of Greater St. James. We're adding on to that to do uh, very other various things that we're trying to, to help. Not only 
uh, around the community, but also in the body of believers. We want to sow into one another also. Amen. God bless you. And so with that in mind, this is our first offering as we give in the new year of our tithing and our offering. And my, my dear sir, I believe in God's system. I believe in God's system. And God's system of giving is tithing and offering. It wasn't just something uh, that was brought up by someone to manipulate or deceive individuals. God brought this system into place. And he brought it into place in the heart of Abraham. Because Abraham believed God and sold and gave. And God multiplied to him. So when we give, we give because we love God and we love his work. And God's work done God's way will never let God supply. So we ask all of you that you will sow and give, you that are listening in, that you will give as the Lord prospers you to give. By the venues that we have, you can give and be a blessing. Also, you can mail in your gift by check or money order to Greater St. James, P.O. Box 1083 North Chicago, Illinois, 60064. You can be a blessing. And God will bless you. I know for a fact that giving has brought us this far because we God has blessed us to give. God has made a way and open doors that no man can shut. He's made ways. He's just, you know, you go into the store and, and uh, my wife can get test. We went into a store and was talking to this lady and stuff and we were talking to her and all of a sudden she just started giving us discount here and cutting that off and her discount and I, I and she, she was a test. I, I was almost started shouting and dancing up in there. Sure enough, I, I was saying, you know what? I'm going to give God praise. I'm going to holler up in this store. God is a good God. Did she, am I telling the truth? I started cutting my step right there. And I told the sister, she, she was a believer, but I told her, I said, I'm going to give God some praise for this because I know God did this. I wonder, do you hear me? God will work a wonder out of nothing. God, God, is, God will go in there before you and touch somebody's heart. We were in another store, and my wife was there, and I you know, bought all this, and she had a little stuff she was going to buy, and the lady that was behind her paid for her stuff. I said, what happened? She said, does she just pay for it? I said, do you know it? No, I don't know her. I said, God, you something else. See, God lets you be in situations so you can watch him work for you. So when you get in situations, just say, God, I'm going to see how you're going to work this out. What you're going to do for me. Don't you love him? So we praise God for Jesus and what he is and who he is in our life. So as you give, God will prosper you. He will make ways and open doors for you. I know one thing. He may not give you a Mercedes tomorrow, but he'll bless you. Amen. When you wake up tomorrow, that's a blessing. I woke up this morning, that was a blessing. And in my sound mind, thank you, I knew where I am. Thank you, Jesus. I knew how to brush my teeth. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. There's some folks that's my age and younger don't even know what to do. Thank you, Jesus. When you wake up in a sound mind and a right mind, a right mind to serve the Lord and a sound mind to do what you got to do, thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless him. Amen. So we thank God for Jesus today. And we ask that you would just let the Lord touch your heart. Let you know if you give $30 in this offering, do so. Whatever the Lord touches your heart to do, let the Lord bless you. He will. And you that are here, we would that the Lord bless you and touch your heart to give. So we say, God bless you. We thank God for you tuning in, being a part of the worship on this morning. And then we also want you to know that we'll be in consecration all this month. We ask the saints to fast and pray. Amen. Sun up to sun down. Go as long as you can. If somebody say, I'm on medication. Well, go as long as you can. But while you're fasting, keep your mind on Jesus. Am I right about it? Turn off all the news and all of that stuff and get, get you some tapes of singing and preaching. And listen to it and meditate on what the Lord has to say. Amen. And as we pray and seek God, we're going to see God move in a great way in the life of his people. So we thank God for you. And then also on Wednesday, we have our Bible studies on Wednesdays and Fridays. You can go on our webpage and there's the uh, time for the uh, conference call prayers that are on there. You can be a part of that. And then we thank God started on yesterday. Uh, teaching on 
personalities. What's the f complete total on the uh, title of that? Personalities? Oh, personalities, all right. Personalities in the church. So I want you to you can tune in. That's on Saturdays starting at 930. So you would be a participant and get that good word that's going forth at this time. So God bless you. We thank God for you. And may the Lord continue to bless you is our sincere prayer. Okay. All right. God bless you. Come on, clap your hands and praise the Lord. Give God praise. Amen. So we say to you, be healed, be strengthened, and be set free. Now come on, clap your hands and thank God for Jesus.